And where else would you rather be on a spring-like Saturday afternoon than at San Susi Ballpark on the south side of Jacksonville? Game two of the High School 912 preseason baseball classic benefiting walk-off charities. We are set to have the Bishop Snyder Cardinals tango with the Ponte Vedra Sharks. Terry Norvell along with my broadcast partner Trent Entorsia as we are midway through three, Trent, three ball games uh, on this winner's bracket Saturday. One game in the books. Ridgeview, or earlier, Ridgeview, the Panthers early and often all over Uly. Triples galore, great defensive plays. It was all Ridgeview as they recorded a 15 to nothing win. Tough day for Uly. They struggled fielding the ball early, and Ridgeview was relentless at the bat. Well, they, they banged out 11 hits, mixed in four errors, and then there was uh, six walks and, and a hit batter. So they did base runners galore all day, and they walked it off in walk-off charity fashion. A real complete game by Ridgeview. They had all three fasts. If they hit it, as you can see, Williams with a great triple here. He made a tremendous defensive play of the game in that exact same spot, and he had quite the game, as did most of the lineup. They hit it, they pitched it, and they fielded it well, and even a good sign. There's another one of the triples, two triples in the game. You don't see that very often, but they even had three guys off the bench in the last half inning that played well. Let's take a look at our visiting team here. That is the Bishop Snyder uh, Cardinals. This is the Bonos look at the visiting team. Last year, Bishop Snyder, 8-15, uh, and 15, uh, a young team. We talked to Coach Osbeck before the ball game. They think they are much improved, and they've got some really talented players, including the guy that will start on the mound, Roblaski, uh, for the Cardinals. Played 366 last year, a couple home runs, and uh, he's one of their top starting pitchers as well. And we'll get a, we'll get a good look at him today. Yeah, um, I don't think he's in the lineup, but he's so, definitely on the. So ball. Nick Rabluski, yes, he'll definitely pitch and maybe pick up a bat a little later for Bishop Snyder. The opponent, Panavidra. The Sharks, 13 and 15. Boy, they play in a tough area, too. There's a lot of good baseball teams in and around that Ponte Vedra Sharks baseball program and just good youth baseball in that area. And they expect better this year than 13 and 15. And they're going to throw a tall lefty on the hill. Are the Sharks a guy by the name of Matt Hope? He's 6'3", 190 pounds sophomore, so he's still got a lot of growing to do. And uh, he's there, he's their number one, so we're going to get a good look at their bat, at both teams' best, and uh, expect him to mix it up. And he's got a little, you know, decent pop on the fastball and certainly some arm side run. And he is ready to go. He's on the hill. Ponavidra in the field. Bishop Snyder, the helmets are on, the bats are in hand. Game two, coming up next on CW17. Brassfield and Gorey, we work daily to build diversity in our workforce, increase collaboration with minority partners, and promote a culture that embraces new ideas and strengthens communities. It's more than a company commitment. Valuing diversity and inclusion helps us live out our purpose of building exceptional people, trusting relationships, great projects, and strong communities. It's about opening doors to new talent and perspectives that will make us even better, more innovative, safe and successful. Settle in, everybody. I think we've got a good one. Ponte Vedra in the black jersey. They are the home team in the field, ready to host Bishop Snyder. Let's take a look at the Bono's Barbecue visiting starting lineup. Roper Bates, Shinowick, Sh Shinowick, Kellum King, LeClaire, Eichelberger, Bazueta and Baptiste, your starting lineup for Bishop Snyder. And they had a good Monday debut. They really came out quick, ran the ball, uh, ran well, got on base, took extra bases. They're, a, they're an aggressive baseball team, and they're facing big Matt Hogue. And, uh, you know, talking to Coach Oz before the game, he's, they're going to be aggressive. They like to run. Yeah. And, uh, 
expect them, you know, when it, if they get on the base pass, they're going. And we'll see what kind of move that lefty has because they do like to run. Roper Bates, Shawaniak, the first three scheduled for Bishop Snyder. This guy right here, Roper, a freshman, was very impressive. I caught early, uh, their early game on Monday as he fouls one opposite way. And we are underway, San Susi Baseball Park. Just a spectacular, gosh, can I call it a spring Saturday? I know we're a month away. It'd certainly give you spring fever. Goodness gracious. Take a look at the Empowering America defense there for the Sharks. Hoven, Mitchell, Gannell, Rambler, Masto, Hartman, Izinski round out the infield. You know about Hogue, the pitcher, and then Matt Wilkins behind the plate for the Sharks as the count is now even at one and one. Working fast is the lefty. Well, pop on that fastball there. Yeah, I mean, they said he's a... He's got a plus arm again. He's only a sophomore. He's got a lot of growth here, but uh, showing pretty good command early on. Bates and Shawaniak to follow. One two pitch. Swing and a miss. Good start for Hogue as he gets a strikeout on a very tough leadoff batter, Roper. That was a good pitch right there. I mean, it wasn't in the zone, but it had late, late action to it. And uh, take another look at it here. And it's a little change up and uh, definitely was out in front and caught him off balance. Don't you hate those, those crafty, lanky, lefties. crafty lefties with I, a change up as we see Nico Bates to the plate wearing number one for the Cardinals of Bishop Snyder. I kind of like crafty lefties, Terry. I ought to. I'll tell you. Starting early, aren't you? Yes, sir. The crafty lefty, Trenton Torsi, as the next ball gets by the catcher for a ball. For people that didn't watch last year, uh, Trent, you and I brought these games on Saturday of a year ago, and uh, I want to remind people, you played three years of pro ball. Left-handed pitcher from Mississippi State right into pro ball, and uh, so you know a thing or two about pitching. Lazy fly ball with a little carry, That's though. Carrying. little carry, dead center field. On the run is the center fielder, and Mitchell goes back and gets it, and gets it next to Old Glory, who is blowing straight out. I don't we necessarily think he hit it that well, but that got him the jet stream and, and carried. It did, and then, you know, take another look here, but I'll tell you one thing. I, I said it in game one. The ball does carry here. My goodness. We've got a decent wind blowing straight out, and uh, he had to drift away for that. Shawaniak, the next batter for the Cardinals of Bishop Snyder. Two up, two down here in the top of the first. We're playing early game two. We play three here. With respect to Ernie Banks, who always wanted to play two, I never heard him say three, but it's a good day for three. It is a great day for three. Fastball right down Main Street for a strike. And as you it just feels like it's going to be a good game, doesn't it? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, both coaches are pretty fired up. They know each other well. Hard hit ball up the middle at the second baseman. Nasty hop. We'll see how that scored. Hard hit ball at the second baseman. And Hartman, that was a tough chance. The runner will reach. And they're talking. Uh, we see an H on the board. It's a hit. Next up, a cleanup hitter. Scored a hit there, Trent. Yeah, I mean he's nasty. He blocked at the it end. up. It did. It was a nasty hop, like like it hit a rock or something. So Shawaniak is on with two out. Kellum, the cleanup hitter for Bishop Schneider. So a couple quick outs and a base hit as the runners go on. Boy, we were told Bishop Schneider's going to run. And, and let the track meet begin. Let the track meet begin regardless of a left-handed pitcher. But see, you, you've got to know that. And, and both teams know each other well. Like I said just a couple of minutes ago, I'm picking on that first pitch right there. He's going, when you steal off a lefty, you're going first move. And they had no chance to throw him out there. I mean, that was a great jump. Hogue to the belt. The pitch gets by Wilkins. That's going to be a fast ball, I believe. As Wilkins got a lot of glove on, I know it was high, but nonetheless, the runner on third base now, so there's something cooking here with two out for Schneider. Yep. Put a ball in play here, put some pressure on the defense. Here it is again. He cut, this, you know, as much as Hogue is around the zone, that ball just really got away from him. And sometimes catchers, they don't expect the unexpected. It's a tough call either way they call that, you know. Got a lot of glove on him, but boy, that was high, you know. Kellum looks at another ball. 2-1, two, 2 out, very early, no score. Winner's bracket Saturday. 
All six teams that play today won earlier in this tournament. Hogue deals down low. Good pitch, but just missed. Looks a little rattled, doesn't he? A little bit. He started out the game pounding the zone, and now he's kind of picking away at it once, uh, once Snyder got a base runner. King would be next. Swing and a miss. You got a good look at that arm side run there. Um, for those who don't know what I'm talking about, that's a tailing fastball from a from a left-handed pitcher, or any pitcher for that matter, but uh, generally left-handers have that run. 3-2 pitch as Hogue's at the belt. Here it is. Oh, right down the middle. Man. Right down the middle. Frozen. A backward K, and Hogue gets out of a little bit of trouble, stranding a base runner on third base. Half an inning in the book. Ponavidra coming to bat. It's game two of the Walk-Off Charities preseason baseball classic. We build ideas for clients. Uh, they typically have an idea or a concept of what kind of project they're going to build. And I think as long as we're involved at the very beginning and we bring realistic budgets and uh, realistic processes that they enjoy, that we can actually build it versus just talking about it. And, you know, we do it as a team. There's 100% transparency. There's uh, a common goal that we're all working towards. Alive Credit Union is proud to be the official credit union of High School 912. Start earning more and saving more for a financially fit lifestyle that's all your own. Like with their new low-rate first-time auto buyer loan, which means lower payments. Free checking, which puts more money in your pocket. And many other financial solutions that help you bank healthier so you can use the extra savings for what makes you happier. Join today at AliveCU.coop. A live credit union. Bank healthier, live happier. We are off and running, heading to the bottom of the first inning. No score. Very early, Ponavidra coming to bat. Bishop Schneider did carve out one base hit. And big Nick Rabluski on the hill getting his final warm-up tosses in for Bishop Schneider as we take a look at the Powering America starting lineup here coming up for those guys, the Sharks of Hanna Vidra, they'll throw Masto, Ganell, Kessel, Wilkins, Rambler, Hartman, the second baseman, Yazinski, Mitchell, and Hoban out in left field will bat nine. Again, that is your Powering America starting lineup for the Hanna Vidra Sharks, who will face Nick Rabluski. And uh, some impressive numbers right there from last year. Yeah. <clears throat> Get a lot of strikeouts. Low. That's a that's a good ERA, and uh, he's their horse. Yeah. So we're gonna, we're seeing they're you know they're number one or two, depending on how you look at it. But uh, they're looking for a strong you know few innings out of him today. Masto, Ganell, and Cassell scheduled one, two, three for Ponte Vedra. If you're just tuning in, Trenton Torch is here. I'm Terry Norvell. Glad you're with us here. Baseball all day on CW17. This is game two of three. Later tonight, First Coast and Bartram Trail as Robluski starts with a high fastball that misses. Tom Stanton, the head guy for those guys, the Sharks, and Zach Osbeck, former JU baseball player, has run the Bishop Snyder ball, uh, baseball program for a long time. Off-speed pitch, and it is a beauty. We talked to Coach Stanton before the game, too. He, they, they like to run. So watch them get aggressive on the base pass if they get base runners. Not a big small ball, small ball guy, so. Foul away there for another strike. You might have quickly saw, boy, if you're new to this ballpark, San Susi, what, hey, what a beautiful complex plex has been redone. But, boy, there's a lot of foul territory. A lot of foul territory. You cannot afford to start throwing the ball around here. Rabluski ready. The pitch hopped up. Outfield. Left fielder calling for it and making the catch. Michael Berger. As we'll take a look at the Snyder defense as they have recorded their first out of hopefully many, according to them. King Batiste LeClaire. Berezueta. I'm sorry, I misidentified there. Berezueta, Roper, Chinoyak, Kellum, Bates behind the plate, and Robluski 
on the hill for the Cardinals. Pinnell next up to the plate for Ponavitra. Takes a high pitch. She's trying to overthrow a breaking ball right there and uh, stays up in the zone. Trent, I'm, I don't think I'm going to jinx us here. It's count now even at one and one, one out. Beautiful day. We're in game two. Not a cloud hardly in the sky. Polar opposite from this tournament a year ago. It rained every single day. We got every game in, including all the Saturday action as there's a strike called strike. But my goodness, I think it rained every day, every hour, every minute of last year's tournament. It did. Somehow it got the games in. And guess what? The most important thing, the field was in great condition. Chop foul at the plate. So early on here, both pitchers throwing strikes and both teams swinging the stick. I'd love to see that. Absolutely. Rapluski ready. His pitch, breaking ball, misses away. So now you get into a 2 2 count. You want to make it happen right here. Minimize three ball counts for all you young pitchers out there. Swing and a miss. That'll be a strikeout. Out number two. Chased a high one there, huh? Here it is again. Pitch is eye level, hard to lay off. Boy, you see that a lot, don't you, at this level? Sean Evans behind the plate. Butch Brannett, the first base umpire, and Ryan Young over at third for this game two of three today. Kessel steps to the plate for Ponavitra, and he has his knees buckle with a nice breaking ball that's a called strike. He got through that breaking ball as opposed to the one uh, first pitch to the last hitter. We just left up, tried to overthrow it a little bit. It's a good adjustment. Chop foul down the third baseline. So a fly is out, a strikeout. And Kessel trying to do something here with two out in the bottom of the first. O2 fastball high. Yeah, good idea right there. Maybe come back with something soft, keep them off balance. Although you got two outs, bases are empty. I'd probably go right at them here. This is the designated hitter. One, two pitch. Chopped to short. Roper fields cleanly. Strong throw, and that'll do it. Yep. Clean baseball so far as we head to the top of the second. No score. Bishop Snyder coming to bat. What can I do with less asthma? With Dupixin, I can do more. Beginner's yoga. Namaste. Namaste. Surprise parties. Aw, you guys. Dupixin helps prevent asthma attacks. A three! So I can do more of the things I love. <laughs> Dupixin is not for sudden breathing problems. It's an add-on treatment for specific types of moderate to severe asthma that can improve lung function for better breathing in as little as two weeks and can reduce or even eliminate oral steroids. And here's something important. Dupixin can cause serious allergic reactions, including anaphylaxis. Get help right away if you have rash, shortness of breath, chest pain, tingling, or numbness in your limbs. Tell your doctor if you have a parasitic infection and don't change or stop your asthma treatments, including steroids, without talking to your doctor. Are you ready to do more with less asthma? Just ask your asthma specialist about Dupixin. King. 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 Doesn't get a whole Eichler. lot more beautiful than that, as I am calling it early spring at San Susi Baseball Park on the south side of Jacksonville. Game two.
top of the second inning. Bishop Schneider coming to bat. Trenton Torshi is hanging around. I'm Terry Norvell. Glad you're with us here on CW17. Baseball all day. Three games. And I think we've got a good one cooking. As it'll be King LeClaire and Eichelberger. The scheduled three, four. The Cardinals of Bishop Schneider swinging a miss. And Hogue comes back out pumping strikes. Really just does. like he did in inning number one. Hello, Early, early here in the uh, second game. Game one was a whitewash, 15-0 Ridgeview over Uly. Chopper to the second baseman. Fielded cleanly, one up, one down as Hartman handled that with no problem. It's the old Baltimore chop right there, but second baseman didn't rush the play, had plenty of time. Here it is again. You'd think with a high hopper like that, a left-handed hitter getting down the line, you'd have to rush that, but uh, did a good job taking his time, and he was out by plenty. With one out, that brings up Tanner LeClaire. Catcher, young sophomore. We mentioned uh, the shortstop for Snyder, Roper, freshman. And, you know, Trent, when you and I were in high school, you were in the 10th grade when you were first year high school. Now it's ninth grade. I couldn't imagine playing high school ball as a ninth grader. No, I... I did you figure seniors, man? They're they're men now, right? I mean, some of these guys are big. And, uh, they had beards, some of them. Yeah. <laughs> Hogue ready. The lefty delivers down low. It's impressive. Both of these starting pitchers, you can tell they, they this is a basic statement, but Trent, they know how to pitch. You can tell they know how to pitch. They've been coached. Well, and the other piece of that too is if you're the coach, you just love you love kids that work fast and pound the strike zone. Low and away. Yeah, he, if you take a look at these last two deliveries for the lefty here, Hope, he fell off those pitches a little bit. He's just got to stay through it. And uh, he's been doing that so far. It's just been a couple pitches. But let's see if he can adjust. And there he One pitch popped up. Will it stay in play? Out of foul territory. The first baseman cannot get over there. Izinski. And there's more life for LeClaire. You know who else appreciates the pitcher? Working fast, every one of those infielders, every one of those keeps you on your toes. Even outfielders, boy, those infielders, boy, you you, you get bricks in your feet. They work slow. Well, you Found know, again, good battle going on. You know that as a former infielder Ooh. yourself, and uh, being a former pitcher, I was often reminded to get to work. It was brutal when you had just a slow working pitcher, and then if they went deep in counts, then all of a sudden you get a rocket sent at you. 3-2, chopped foul. I'd chalk this up as a quality at bat right here. Good at bat, good battle. Be, be a tough out. Pop fly out to shallow right field, and it is handled by Gunnell. Two up, two down. And that's a nice adjustment by Hogue after two pitches get away from him. He, he makes the proper adjustment, and he threw five straight strikes. Michael Berger will be your next batter. Panavidra, their record wasn't great. We saw at the beginning of the uh, telecast from last year. What was it, 13 and 15? But, but they made a run. They lost in the regional finals. They made a run in the yeah. playoffs, and I think a lot of it had to be Attributed to again, they play in a great area of baseball. They face some good teams. So that record may not look great From a year ago, but they made a run you made it to the regional finals You don't have to apologize to anybody. No, we got a good we got a good look at them last year in this right class. Yes. Yeah 2 and 0 oh count to Eichelberger Good pitch good spot <laughs> Trent that brought a smile to your your former lefty pitching face right there, huh? I'd still be playing with that strike zone. I think Good luck with that one. And he swings through one, does Eichel Berger. Two and two. Good battle back for Hogue. Don't lose him here. Go right at him. He hasn't shown you anything at the plate yet. Working fast. Pitch right there down the is. middle. There it is. Another backward K. 
We got ourselves a good one, folks. Settle in. Some good early, early preseason baseball. As you see the way the half inning ended, Hogue with another great fastball. Still no score. Ponavidra coming to bat in a second. We build ideas for clients. Uh, they typically have an idea or a concept of what kind of project they're going to build. And I think as long as we're involved at the very beginning and we bring realistic budgets and uh, realistic processes that they enjoy, that we can actually build it versus just talking about it. And, you know, we do it as a team. There's 100% transparency. There's uh, a common goal that we're all working towards. Alive Credit Union is proud to be the official credit union of High School 912. Start earning more and saving more for a financially fit lifestyle that's all your own. Like with their new low-rate first-time auto buyer loan, which means lower payments. Free checking, which puts more money in your pocket. And many other financial solutions that help you bank healthier so you can use the extra savings for what makes you happier. Join today at AliveCU.coop. A live credit union. Bank healthier, live happier. Yeah. Wilkins, Rambler, and Hartman, the three scheduled sharks, do up here bottom of the second inning to face Nick Rabluski, a right hander on the hill, right there for Bishop Snyder. No score. Trenton Torsia is hanging around here in the broadcast booth. I'm Terry Norvell. Second time we have called these Saturday championship games. Trent, we got a good one. This is, you, can, you can feel it. I said it an uh, inning ago. I'm going to say it again. You can feel it's going to be a good baseball game. No question about it. And uh, you've got the two horses on the mound for each team, both of their arguably aces. And uh, they've not disappointed. They're filling up the strike zone. Mac Wilson, Wilkins, the catcher for Ponavider. A nice visit with his dad. Um, Rick Wilkins played a little ball with Rick and known him a long, long time. Former major leaguer out of the bowl school. Go, Rick had himself 11 years of big sure baseball. Did. Sure did. I am back. I'm back. Played one year of college ball, and boy, he was special. Breaking ball and a good one. That was his best one of the day right there. Sometimes it takes a pitcher an inning or two to kind of get loose, get lathered up, and that is even Another. better than the last one. Just gorgeous breaking ball. Not a lot you can do, particularly with two strikes. If you remember in the first the Wilkins goes down swinging. We talked about him leaving his breaking ball up, and you watch this. He really gets through that pitch, and it's got that late break, and it's got wow. good depth to it. So Rambler, Cole Rambler, steps to the plate to see what he can do with Mr. Rabluski. Very early, but only one hit so far between the two teams. And that was on a bad hop. A wicked hop. Yes, it was. Bishop Snyder, a 3A school. Ponavidre, a 6A school. Another swing and a miss. Yeah, and helped him out there, it looked like, didn't it? Sure did. Might have been a little off the plate. 2-0 swing. That's not a great 2-0 swing right there. You're looking something to box up and barrel up. Great miss right there, wasn't it? Yeah, Rabluski, maybe a little bit too fine to this hitter. First time through the lineup, I'm kind of going at people, see what you got. The 3-1 and misses. Case in point, 3-1 breaking ball there with uh, the bases empty. Kind of a head scratcher, but uh, I don't know. Maybe the scouting report says something we don't know. So Ponavidra has her first base runner on a walk to Rambler. Takes us to the six-hole hitter. Look for the track meet to begin. Hart Stanton said they will run. And they don't need a sign. They Kurt. feel they can take it. They can take it. Grady Hartman to the plate. Now, you also have to work in conjunction with your batter. Your batter's got to know that a little bit. Hey, can't be swinging at first pitch if you want us to run a little bit, guys. That's exactly right. Now, the Snyder's got the book on it because they pick right away. Sure. The pitch missing low again. You're right. He's trying to pick that outside corner and might be a little too fine. Just it. It's kind of 
And you don't really have to be. Again, first time through the lineup. Can you hit me? Swing and a miss. That was a great location. Yeah, it was. It was a good pitch right there. Does he go back to that breaking ball 1-1 one, one here? I'll tell you what, with the major league guys bickering back and forth and not opening spring training, if I can get a bunch of high school games like this on TV and some of the great college baseball on TV, they can do what they want in Major League Baseball as the breaking ball doesn't break, but Hartman gets out of the way. Yeah, they can they can fight over all their money, all the money they have all they want, right? That'd make me if we didn't have Major League Baseball, I wish the networks would just unload on Kai and as the runner is caught on a pickoff. And they got him, right? Yeah, they called him out. So uh, that'll erase the ba uh, base on balls. And sometime you run yourself out of an inning, maybe. Good composure by the pitcher, too. He had to step off. You have to step off the rubber there, make a complete break from the rubber, or it's a balk, and he gets the base for free. That changes things up. With a quickness, nobody out, or excuse me, nobody on, two out now for Hartman, who's still battling. College baseball polls came out. And, uh, I guess Texas won, defending champion Mississippi State two, or just the SEC, the rest of the top yeah. ten, basically, as that will be yet another strikeout. Two pitchers, a righty and a lefty, are dealing. And that takes us to the top of the third. No score in a good high school baseball game. We're coming back on CW17. America, home of the free. Free is our favorite word. Like free refills. <laughs> And free samples. Yum. Joy. Thank you. Free samples. Mm. We get it. That's why at Morgan & Morgan, our fee is free. That means you don't pay anything unless we win your case. Injured? Call Morgan & Morgan. For the people .com. It's free. Hello. How was your day? Amazing. How was yours? Make your day with a double dose of two and a half men and mom. It's not funny. Maybe not funny. Ha ha, but certainly funny. <laughs> two hours of laughs every weeknight. Good Lord, man, you're a genius. I'm so happy for us. Don't tell anybody. I have to tell everybody. <laughs> back to back episodes of Two and a Half Men and Mom. Weeknight starting at 5 on CW17. Ball field. As you've heard the, the saying, it takes a village. Well, it takes a lot of great sponsors to put on an event like this. We want to thank Fortegra. Let's reach new heights together. CSI Companies, your workforce solutions reimagined. Bunner's Barbecue, real pit barbecue since 1949. Airstream Ventures, business, entertainment, sports. Duval Motor Company, proudly serving Northeast Florida since 1916. Trenton Torsia, Terry Norvell, and you. Great sponsors. Great event and a heck of a game so far here as Bishop Snyder comes to the plate in the top of the third. Berezueta, Baptiste, and then to the top, Roper, the scheduled batters here as Berezueta goes opposite field. He drops one in, base hit for Snyder. So first pitch swinging, didn't hit it hard, found a spot. A little C and I hit there, right? We kind of call them bleeders, but if you look outside part of the plate, he doesn't try to do anything fancy. Just get the bat on the ball and it finds the right spot. To the nine position in the lineup, Baptiste. They first pitched stole last time when they had a runner on first. Let's see if he picks here. And he does. And there we go. The foul territory will come into play. They got a good bounce off the fence though right there, but still nonetheless an error. Puts a runner in scoring position with nobody out. What does B Bishop Snyder do here, Trent? It looks like as long as these pitchers stay in the game. He was we're squaring the bunt Yes, here. he was. So I... Do they bunt him over with these two pitchers right I, now? I, I'm not a gambling man, but I'd almost bet the house on it that they put the bunt down here. 
But your left-handed hitter, all you have to do is pull sure. the ground ball right That's here. That's true as well. We'll see how they play it. Squaring to bunt is Baptiste. And again, that's a good little savvy baseball. You do a fake inside move to kind of see if the batter will tip. Great point. That helps, out, that helps your corners and your infielders. The wheels are turning here early in this ball game. We would think runs may be at a premium here. Hogretti, batter squares, and he takes a strike. Good location on that pitch. Mason Baptiste. Looks like Bonavidra. I'm sorry. Looks like Ponavidra's in a, just kind of a standard sure. defense here. First base. First baseman <laughs> creeping in a little bit. Baptiste does not square and takes a pitch down low. Here we go. Oh, the strategy of baseball, Trent. Left on left. You just got to pull the ground of ball baseball, right here. Yep. Mines are working overtime right now. Second baseman, oh, midway kind, and he's creeping in a little bit. Hogue looking back, may step off. He does not. Here's the pitch. Perfect location. Not a lot you're going to do with that anyway. It's going to be hard to pull that pitch, too. Really I'm, Hogue, I'm going same pitch, same spot. Don't get cute. And the one-two pitch. So we're going to miss. Gets away from the catcher. Did he foul tip it? It's hard to believe he didn't. Did he foul tip that? And it looks like where the umpires are positioning, they say no. And we might have a little bit of a conference. As again, let me go over the umpires again. We told you a moment ago, behind the plate, Sean Evans, Butch Brannick at first, and Ryan Young, the third base umpire. And they're going to say a strikeout. E2, right? So that ball did not hit the dirt. Nothing but good. yeah, you got to stick that pitch right there. But nothing but good came out of that for Bishop Schneider as Roper, the leadoff batter, is in the batter's box. Hard hit ball, clean base hit. That'll be the first run of the game, driven in by Roper, the good-looking freshman. As Bishop Snyder has cracked the scoreboard, still nobody out, runners at first and second. I saw this guy Monday, really nice baseball you, player, freshman. You, you were raving about Absolutely. him in our pregame meeting, and uh, he has not disappointed, has he? Struck out his first time up, but then comes back and smashes a line drive to left. How about freshman shortstop? Love it. Does that mean he's going to be here four years? I think so. <laughs> Bears way to scores. Baptiste to second. Roper at first. Still nobody out. If you're playing behind him or you're saying, Coach, oh, yes. try me out at second base. I hear you. Nico Bates to the plate. Ponavidra looking for a ground ball double play. And Bishop Snyder trying to bunt out of that potential ground ball double play. And Bates bunted right through it. It's that small ball mentality. I'm, I didn't grow up on that brand of ball, but I certainly understand it, particularly in a game like this. You mentioned it earlier, runs are at a premium. Bates chops it off the plate. Good play by the third base coach. Shawaniak on deck for Schneider. Still nobody out. Ground ball opposite side could be two. Fielded good play by the second baseman for one. High throw. Runner stays at third. Now he's heading home. There may be a play at the plate. The first baseman bobbles the ball, and the throw is late. So a lot happening, and watch the base runner. Has time been called yet? So another run scores. What do we have? A fielder's choice and an error. Yes, error, error on the throw. You can't assume a double play, but since the run scored, that is a, a throwing error. And watch, if you watch the, you can't see Baptiste, the runner at third, but he stops on the bag. Absolutely. Doesn't make the turn. If that ball's fielded cleanly right here, he's probably out of yes, the play. Yes, first baseman bobbled it just a hair there. Izinski. So a lot happening and a run scoring. 2-0 Bishop Snyder. One out. 
Correct. We got the, the out at second out there on the fielder's choice. Fielder's choice, correct. Shawaniak, the batter. And you are so right. That runner on third was not going. Bates leading off, dances away, and I mean, Swaniak you, takes a uh, swinging strike there. You still have to make an aggressive turn at third on that. Assume it's going to be a bad throw, and if not, you retreat. Boy, that ball just sailed on Masto as well, didn't it? it Shortstop. Did. So just like that, two nothing, two runs on the board quickly here. A clean RBI single, and then. An assist on an error by the shortstop for Pontevedra. 2 0 Bishop Schneider. Oh, I mean, Outside called strike. How big is that drop third strike now? Mm. You know, I mean, that mm. kind of changed the complexity of the whole, in the whole inning. Hogue trying to battle his way out. He hasn't pitched bad this inning. Big jump by Bates. And that was a stolen base that was taken away there. Bates had one heck of a run, a little, uh, oh, heck of a jump, a little hit and run maybe there. Boy, they are aggressive. Boy, we talked did. to uh, uh, Coach Osbeck because I saw three innings of Snyder's game on Monday, and Buddy, particularly the first three or four batters, they run, run, run when they get on base. They put the pressure on the defense. Well, yeah, when you're running like that, you've got defensive players moving and sometimes moving out of position and uh, let's get the ball on the ground here. You know, and the other thing, if you're straight steel here, you're going first move on a left-handed pitcher. So if he's got that long leg kick, sure. you know, he's like a 1.5, one, 1.6 one, seconds to the plate. Anybody can steal that bag, except me. Swing and miss. Runner is going. Throw down the second. Tails into center field. Bates heading for third. Here's the throw. And Bates will slide in safely. So Snyder threatening again here as they are really aggressive. Bates taking off. The strikeout happened, and then the throw gets into center field. Ball tailed on the catcher there. Trent? It did. I mean, he, he really didn't have a shot. He no. just tried to, you know, come out no. of the chutes throwing, but it did tail into the runner. And uh, But again, no, no chance to throw him out there. Kell him to the plate. Boy, this would be a big run here if, if, if Hope could get out of this with only two. This would be a big, big shutdown here. That's how they learn. Good cut. That was a really nice cut. Fastball a little bit up. Boy, that was up and over the middle of the plate. Felt right? high over the middle of the plate for Kellum. He just missed it. That's like an ice cream cone pitch right there, isn't it? Mm. Called strike. No champion crown. Obviously, this is a all week tournament where 12 teams started on Monday and Tuesday total. Everybody guaranteed two games. Your winning teams play all today. The teams that lost their first game played the last couple of days. So no champion crown, but three teams will get out of here 2 0 and feel real good about opening the high school baseball season, which starts next week. Yeah, and everybody got their two their two preseason games. This is a good matchup for both of these sure teams is. to see what they've got. And Hogue pitches his way out of it. Some damage done, though, for Bishop Snyder. We've got our first runs on the board. Ponavita coming to bat, trailing Bishop Snyder 2-0.
Start ahead. The future you're dreaming of is closer than you think. Get on the fast track at FSCJ. Complete a certificate or workforce training program in one year or less and take your career to the next level. Or build on the credits you already have to earn your degree. With support services like online advising and financial aid, it's never been easier to get started. At FSCJ, we're with you every step of the way. Enroll now for spring. FSCJ.edu slash fast track. Bishop Snyder with a two spot in the top of the third, and the Cardinals have taken that two to nothing lead over Ponte Vedra. Terry Norvell on with Trenton Torsia here at the ballpark, San Susi Ballpark, the high school 9 12 preseason baseball classic, well underway on championship Saturday. This tournament benefits walk off charities. Trent, damage done by the Cardinals, yet. I don't think Hogue threw that bad in that half inning, Trent, but they, they scratched two against him. He scratched two across. Of course, the drop third strike really kind of dictated it that there. That always causes problems. It does. It doesn't it? It, it, well, it created a first and third situation. Next guy comes up, gets a sharp single, and the game's opened up. Yazinski, Mitchell, Hoven, your scheduled three for Ponavita, and Yazinski hacking swing, r swings right through a fastball. Pondavitra still looking for the first hit on the day. Boy, he did, he threw really good breaking balls to end the the last the last frame there, and he comes out and hangs out one. He's just overthrown it a little bit. Opposite field. Watch that carry. Watch that carry. Yazinski gets into one, and it's out of here. Our first home run of the day as Yazinski carried one opposite field. A lot of power in that swing there, Mr. Trent and Torcia. Talk about it. And you know what we call that? An oppo taco. Nice. Opposite field home run. If you can gap to gap hit like that, you can play at a high level. And I'm going to tell you right now, that pitch was out over the plate. And Yazinski just stays through it. Take another look here. Really nice. Kept his hands inside the baseball and drove it. And it is in our, it's in our friend's backyard, which I'm still waiting for a burger. From those yeah, guys. they had it going. There's the they they waited game one all day to get a ball and they gave up and Yazinski sent him one out there. And we have a retriever out there. Mitchell gets into an another early pitch. One. Here's another deep shot, and it is out of here. And we've got back-to-back -back home runs just like that in a tie baseball game. Mitchell with a dong. Oh, my. Two pitches, two swings, two dingers. Tie ball game. And we were the, talking about the pitching dominance here. Let's go, buddy, Mitchell. Let's go, buddy, Mitchell. This ball's crushed. I mean... Sadahara O oh, with the, the step into it, like Sadahara O, oh, and it gets out of here quick. Another pitch up out over the plate. And his command's been been pretty good, but now you struggle again to get the breaking ball over. These hitters are sitting on a fastball. So rabluski has got to find some composure as he comes back with a breaking ball. <laughs> he didn't want to throw a fastball he there. Have to, Even right to here. the number nine hole hitter, Hoban. My goodness, fireworks just like that. We're tied at two. I guess Ponavita heard me say they have no hits. I, they didn't take too kindly to they it. They did Terry. not take too kindly. And just like that, Mr. Rabluski is scuffling a little bit as he gets a little help from Hoban. And a nice play by the catcher. He kept his mask on. You gotta lose the mask <laughs> he there. Kept, <laughs> he kept his mask on, but he made the catch. I was gonna it say, him. if that obstructed him and he drops that there, you blame it on the mask. They teach you, rip the thing off, throw it out of harm's way. But uh, it's a good play right there. Man, did they need that? And did Robluski need that? Top of the order now, Masto. He was a flyout victim in the first. But that happened quick, didn't it? If you had to get up and use the restroom or something, you two swings my, of the bat and my goodness, you're gracious. tied up. Ground ball out to short. Roper field, we smooth. <laughs> he he is. is smooth. Just makes the play. He's got good hands. Second showed, out of the inning. Showed a pretty good arm right there too. 
Here it is again. To see him bouncing pre-pitch. He's, he's out there. We could see him as the pitcher was delivering that ball in the background. His feet were moving around a little bit. He wasn't stationary. And it showed right there. He was in perfect position. Gunnell to the plate. Hits in the two hole. He was a strikeout victim. His first at bat against Robluski. Have we got like a heavyweight boxing match going Man, on? Man, we right might. Now? This is a good looking baseball game. Breaking ball just misses as Trent. Uh, big eyes there, Trent. You gave me big eyes there. Saucer on that one. eyes. You gave right me big there. eyes on that one, Trent. <laughs> you and Mr. Evans didn't agree with that by the play. <laughs> There's a ball hit in the gap. Another clean base hit. So, man, Ponavidra has come out swinging here in the third. A two out single, and we continue. Another look at this. Hanging, breaking ball. And you know what they say? You hang them, we bang them. Kessel, your Good batter. piece of hitting right there. He grounded out the shortest first at bat. So three hits in the inning, two runs have crossed the plate, and Ponavita came into the third hitless and runless. And he's saying, you, you get to hit my fastball, throw a breaking ball, throws a breaking ball, and they hit the breaking ball. This turned fun quick, didn't it? They sure did. <laughs> the second time through the lineup, too. So Two out, tied at two. Two good baseball teams going at it. Inside breaking ball called strike. Wilkins would be next. Robluski takes his time. Trent, what do you think? You pitched a lot of baseball in your career. What are you thinking? You cruise through two innings, big goose eggs across the board. You look up, and there's two home runs hit off you in. 90 seconds, maybe two pitches. I mean, two pitches, 90 seconds. One, get a new ball back, throw it, <laughs> yes. and that, that ball leaves the yard too. Kind of, it, it's got to rattle a guy, right? And he showed pretty good composure here, getting two quick outs. Then he gives up the base hit, but let's see if we can end the damage here. And Hogue, the lefty, is in the dugout, thinking, "I got new life." He's off the hook. And another base running sure. error. That'll end the inning, but a lot of damage done by the Sharks as Ponavidra breaks out the long ball in the third. We'll take it to the top of the fourth. Your score, Bishop Snyder 2, Ponavidra 2. I'm John Morgan of Morgan & Morgan. 40% of Americans don't have $400 saved in case of an emergency. People are working harder and harder, but falling further and further behind. That's why at our firm, our fee is free. You don't pay us anything unless we win your case. When you're injured in an accident or hurt on the job, choosing a lawyer will be the most important decision you'll have to make. For the people isn't just a slogan. It's what we do. It's who we are. Injured? Call Morgan & Morgan, America's largest injury law firm. Become a local VIP with New Sport Jacks Insider. Behind the scenes access, live Q&As with anchors, exclusive weather tools, first dibs on local discounts and events. Sign up and sign in to New Sport Jacks Insider, Channel 4, the local station. We are playing some hardball here at San Susi Ballpark on a gorgeous, I'm calling it spring afternoon as Hanavedra goes Long ball twice, Yazinski and Mitchell back-to-back -back in the previous half inning as we welcome Frank Franchi to the broadcast. Ponder Reader shut out, hitless until long ball shows up. Back-to-back -back bombs, it was fun too, wasn't it? Why the wind was really blowing out of the one to the right center, not as much, but yeah. This park, it's uh, our park, you know, Barry, I grew up in this park. 315 down the line to 350 center, so it's not a big park. But we don't have a lot of home runs in this thing. Now, that Bartram Trail team, you'll see tonight's going to hit a few. But it was, uh, those are two bombs for sure. Got a fun baseball game right now, too. It is nice, yeah. Well, uh, coach teams, they have style, you can tell. Yeah. They, they believe in what they do. And, Terry, the two coaches here in this yes. game particularly, Tom Stanton upon of Eden yes. and Zach Osbeck of uh, Bishop Stein, not only really good coaches, but two guys that have been so loyal to the walk-off cause. Probably the two guys, and along with my friend John Farrell, of, the, of all the coaches that have been so involved in what we do at walk-off. I'm telling you, 
there's no walk off without these two coaches. I, and, and that really is the truth. And Chris Perry, the new pitcher right there, number 15 for Pontevedra. He walks into a whale of a baseball game here. Well pitched, even though we just went back to back home runs. I mean, yeah. Rabluski was cruising there for Bishop Snyder. And Ho, oh, gosh, he gave up a couple, the lefty for Pontevedra, but he threw well. Yeah, he did. And, and I'm telling you, just, you said it best. Two, two well coached teams. Um, uh, Pontevedra saved their number one guy for today. Rabuski threw a little bit the other day earlier in the week. I think he came in second for Bishop Snyder, but you're right, too good. These are two fun teams. Well, I'm glad you're out here, Terry. I appreciate you coming out here and calling these games for us again. You and Trent, I said you just traded down. Now you had Trent a minute ago in this year, and I got me. So this is a big trade down, so you got to overcome that. Hit by pitch there. That was King. It's King LeClaire Eichelberger and a first batter reaching base for Bishop Snyder. Oh, we had fun. We had a blast last year with nothing but rain, and I mean, this is... We deserve this, by this, the way. We really do. All it did was rain last year, so uh, so we certainly deserve this this year. We're, mm -hmm. we're happy to have it, and oh, God, what a beautiful day it is. It's been a beautiful week, Terry. All week long, it's been like this, and we have, we, we've we been very blessed, and uh, people have come out. We had a clinic yesterday. Uh, one of our... You've been to our clinic, sure. and, and uh, Trent, by the way, is one of our best teaching... He couldn't come yesterday. He's one of our best uh, pitching coaches Absolutely. of our clinic. Does a great job with those, so we had a great clinic yesterday as well, so it's been a good week for walking off and a good week to start really the baseball season so a tough start here by the new pitcher a hit by pitch and a balk runner at second base nobody out that gets us to LeClaire really neat this this entire event and it takes a village you kind of yeah, say that yeah. and walk off uh, charities high school 912 is geared toward high school and yeah. bettering the high school age young people in our community Walk-off charities geared more to the um, grade schoolers, the third graders. Yeah. Duval County Public Schools is involved. Uh, this beautiful ballpark that we had Councilman Salem on yeah. uh, talked about. Just a, there's a lot of moving parts, all for the good. Well, and let me start. We, you know, we we've talked a lot about what we do with walk-off, and, and, and we're proud of how we rebuilt this park. But let me talk for a second about. And there's a high fly ball. Watch this one, carrying the center field. Back, back, back. It stays in the park. But it'll be an extra base hit. Will the run score? He's being waved around third. And there will be a late throw. And Bishop Snyder has taken the lead again. Long ball showing up yeah. again, Frank Franklin. I love the offense. I tell you what, they're free swinging out here, aren't they? They really are. And what happens, and you know this, Terry, all the time you play, pitchers are around the plate. Absolutely. Pitchers are around the plate. You're going to see balls in play and guys swinging from the heels a little bit. So uh, and, uh, I tell you what, that was that was um, right down Peach Street that time. These guys get hit. These are two good teams. These teams will play. They're going to go deep into their respective districts. It's fun watching these guys. Uh, but back to your point earlier, uh, we've talked. I know you've talked a lot about walk off, and I'm proud of how we what we've done with it and with this ballpark. But what High School 912 does, Terry, uh, and we and I don't know that I talk enough about that. That's Alan Verlander's group Airstream put that together. It really helps students in high school get ready for college, have they give them a chance to get into college with scholarship dollars, teaching them how to take tests, correct, to standardizing tests, and uh, you can't imagine how many kids from our area are in college because high school 912 helped get them ready and get them into college and i can't say enough about what high school 912 and that terrific initiative that uh, my friend alan verlander started does it it is a fantastic fantastic initiative michael Berger up to bat four bishop snyder nobody out snyder has taken a three to two lead i'm glad you brought up airstream ventures we talked with the councilman earlier yeah. um, game one about you know this event has to be put on and hosted you need an event group right. Airstream Ventures, they know what they're doing. Yeah, this they, is a, uh, this isn't just a, hey, let's uh, call 12 teams and come play some ball. I, I will tell you, Jared Simmons, our, our director of operations for Walk Off, who started out as a, an employee of Airstream Ventures and has now moved to our company, and Kennedy T Kennedy Grayson, who now who still works for Airstream, they have worked all, they spent so much time putting this thing on, and they've worked so hard at it, and that's one of the reasons it is so good. So we're, we're proud of this here. We're proud of this event. Um, as from the Walk Off side, Terry, we've, uh, We've reached over 5,000 kids now. We've put close to 500 through leagues, free leagues. So kids, can, so kids that normally couldn't play baseball like you and I could play baseball growing up, uh, the kids who weren't able to can do it. So we're real proud of that, and, and it's going to be a good year for us. And this kind of starts off sort of our, our calendar year here. Eichelberger goes opposite field. It may tail out of play, and it does. Let me follow up. If I'm doing my math right, and, Frank, I'm from the west side, so I don't do math real well, walk-off charities. You're the founder. Takes a village. A lot of people have helped you. 2017, geared toward the third grader. Yeah, well, that's how we start. We, yeah, we, we, geared we start, in that area. We so start with the third grader. The, the, right. the third, 
we're a few years away. That third grader is yeah. about to become a high schooler. That's right. It's yeah. going to be real neat to see your as, as uh, Eichelberger reaches base. It's going to be neat to see that group. That's right. Come through and become high school nine twelve and come through here and play and, 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 and the, the ones who take to it. And, and I tell people all the time, we're not trying to find the next superstar. We're trying to give kids an opportunity. What I want Terry as a kid, you know, you. you You've seen these kids here. You go to school and you're in the third grade, fourth grade, fifth grade. One kid wears his uniform to school, so he's got his T-shirt on. His, his, he plays for the Yankees, and he talks about the championship he won last week. And the kid sitting next to him can't do that because he didn't get to play. And, Correct. And, and so, so one kid's got a jersey on talking all about championships. The other kid doesn't have enough money to play baseball. Well, that's what we're trying to mitigate. It's we're tough. trying to, so everybody has opportunity. Everybody plays on a team. Everybody understands selflessness and teamwork. Everybody should play little league baseball, even Agreed. if you don't take to it. Everybody should get a chance, and that's what we're proudest of. Is that all these kids get a chance? But your point's a good one that I hadn't thought about. It you said they're it. coming through. Yeah, we've got some kids now that are seventh and eighth graders. <laughs> this started with our clinics. <laughs> yeah, really and, 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 we, and we do. We, we start our clinics with eighth grade or with uh, third graders. Terry, they're about eight years old. That's old enough that they're not playing in the dirt. Sure. But young enough, we get them to, if they like baseball, it's it's not too late to get into it. And that's why we pick eighth graders to start. There's Wade trying right to now. bunt the runners over, and he gets a break there as he popped that bunt up. Nobody out, runs at first and second. And, of course, Berezuda, the eight-hole hitter, Frank, Frank got to move him over here. Yeah. Got to move him over here, and he uh, nearly popped that up to the catcher. It was a good game. A real I, good I, game. I, I, and, and I thought this would be one of the better games. Look, we appreciate all the teams that come. They're well coached. They battle. But they're, because we have... So many teams, Terry, from Duval, St. John's, Clay, Nassau, private, public. There's going to be some mismatches, and we know that. We, you try to mitigate that as best you can. They all play hard, but we thought this would be a pretty close game. This is a game of the of the three championship sure. games we targeted as one that might be the we thought might be the most competitive of them, and it has been. It's three to two here in the top of four. I was kidding around with a uh, mutual buddy, a longtime friend of yours, Tom Bauman, earlier, and I said, Tom, where did Frank? This is your home ballpark yeah. as a kid. Where did Frank? Were you walking distance of San Susi? Yeah. Where well, you actually grew up in your your um, neighborhood home? I lived I lived one block from. I always walked up here. I lived literally one block carry down beach boulevard for okay. me and i and i grew up I, what i tell the kids when i when they come to the clinics what i've been telling them for years is you see those terry see those trees out there in left field sure okay i say i used to rattle them around there <laughs> and i said the beauty now is i'm old enough now that if i am lying you won't know okay <laughs> just so we're clear there you go uh, but yeah i, I lived uh, literally about a 10 minute walk from here right down beach boulevard uh, to burke holder but literally, literally 10 minutes away that pitch by Perry got by the catcher. Both runners moved up. So Perry's still in a lot of trouble here as he's come in and given up a uh, the go-ahead run. Runners at second and third. And, boy, you guys have done a great job with this ballpark. Yeah, the, I mean, just gorgeous here. Just yeah. gorgeous. Yeah, the, uh, the, the, the AgriPro people that we pay to take care of the grass do a wonderful job. And Billy King and his team at SYAA, they manage the park, and they, for the city of Jackson, not for us, we just we just get to use it some and take care of kind of the grass, but uh, they do a wonderful job. Yeah, I'm proud of this park. I mean, I, people come out and see this park, they go, wow, this is a, doesn't look like a city park sometimes. We're, we're very proud of how it looks, and, and our friends at the city, Daryl Joseph, the company, do a great I job. High fly ball, well. looks like it'll stay in the infield, and the catch will be made. That was Rambler over on third base, so finally the first out recorded. We talked about, obviously, this is your ballpark. I grew up on the west side. I was a Normandy Athletic Association guy. But everybody in our age group had their home ballpark, and that right. got away. That's yeah. gotten away. And well, other parks in our area have partnered with walk-off. So, yeah. so a, a nearby park can, again, become a home park for kids. We want what's the equivalent of what we used to be rec ball. And, and now, I mean, travel ball is everywhere now. And that's why we started walk-off, Terry, because we want kids playing in their neighborhood park, not necessarily on a travel team. Sure. I'm not knocking travel. Travel's great. But we want kids playing in, in their neighborhood park. We Our league, our spring league involves 10 inner city parks. We play a few games here, but it's mostly in the inner city. It's, uh, it's, it's, it's Brentwood Park, and it's Moncrief, and it's Grand Park, and some areas, some, some Yancey Park. And, uh, and yeah, and, and we want to create what you and I grew up with as a, you and I grew up with rec ball. We went sure. to the park and you stayed all day. And we're trying to recreate that as best we can. Sebastian Ortiz, the left-handed uh, batter there. He's a pinch hitter as Snyder goes left on left on left you pull lefty off the bench yeah, trying to go yeah, lefty left yeah, he, they must know something though yeah ponavita's got a lot of left-handed pitches yes so they you, do. You, you got a yes. pinch here he's probably going to face yes. the lefty chopped at the plate it'll go foul frank three teams last year used this tournament to really catapult their season yeah. uh fleming island a good looking team they lost in the state finals mm -hmm. 
you had Pontevedra lost this team Pontevedra lost in their regional finals and St. John's Country Day also right a team a year ago that was in this tournament catapulted that into a, a, a run to the state championship game where they also lost so this can be a springboard yeah and let's hope good piece of hitting there opposite field and yes coach uh, did know what he was doing he sent in the left-handed batter and he drove in a couple of runs with a double how about that piece of hitting? I love the little lefty going opposite way. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Drove in, too. Again, that's a scrappy team, man. Uh, Zach Osbeck's yep. Bishop Snyder team's always been a bunch of scrappers, and they scrapped two right there. Now they lead five to two. Uh, to your point a moment ago, that's, you know what? That's pretty good hitting. That's inside-out hitting. Really that nice. ball was on the inside half of the play. Kept his hands back, let the ball travel, and hit it to, to left field. That's a real good job, a real good piece of hitting here. By the way, Player. I think what he would have been out plate. of the plate, but the ball dropped out of the catcher. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Uh, Tom Tom Stanton, a former catcher, will tell his catcher, two hands, hand, ball in the hand, hand in the glove, rather than just one hand there, and that's a mistake by the catcher. Um, back to your point about the teams that have played here, that St. John's Country Day team is a really good team. Um, watch, wait, you haven't seen that Bartram Trail team yet. I've heard that, a lot about them That team year. you see tonight at 7 o'clock, if they don't go deep into the state playoffs, everybody would be surprised. They are, Terry, they're truly that good. We're going to take a break. We're going to pitching change here. Uh, Frank, you started this, so you're sticking around. I'll be okay? here. I'm Old not pitcher. Going you're not get out I of here yet. Be. We got a good one working 5 2. Bishop Schneider, they come back to, to the plate when we come back. get a lot of mileage out of what you drive. At Duval Motor Company, we put service first. With complimentary service loaner vehicles and multiple locations to serve you, our service teams take care of you by providing repair services for every make and model. Ford, Honda, Acura, Subaru, Chevrolet, and everything in between. We've got Duval covered when it comes to service. Any make, any model, any location. DuvalMotorCompany.com. 5-2, Bishop Snyder leading Ponavedra as the Sharks have run another pitcher to the mound. Thomas DeGuey, the right-hander, comes in trying to put this rally out as Snyder has scratched three more across. They lead 5-2. Terry Norvell on the call. Frank Franchi sitting in for a few more moments here as he is uh, kind of running the whole thing. And I know I always say it takes a village, but Frank... Uh, um, Where would the offense come from all of a sudden? Yeah, well, I, again, uh, we talked about this. Pitchers are around the plate. Yeah. These are two well-coached teams. And I, and I will tell you this now. Zach and Zach Osbeck, the Bishop Snyder coach, and the Ponte Vita coach, Tom Stanton, they both told, they like the, they like their team this year. They both think this is a team that could be pretty good for them. Um, so I'm not surprised these guys swing the bat. I, I don't think we're done. I think you've got more offense coming. I really believe that. Note this ball player right here, Roper, yep. the shortstop, freshman, really good baseball player. Yeah. I've been out. This is my third day here, right. um, first right. day of broadcasting. I was out twice during the week. And, is, he, uh, is he already committed to Florida? He, he's, he's verbaled, as I understand, to Florida. To, 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 as a ninth grader. As a ninth grader. Yeah, he's, he's, he's a, a really freshman. good player. Really nice player. I saw him immediately on Monday. I go, wow, I love his actions. Yeah. Ninth grader, Frank. Yeah, yeah. They, they, they've got, and you will see, he's a really good player. You'll see another ninth grader tonight, Kendall, who's also committed to Florida. There's, think about it, there's two ninth graders in this it's tournament. That Kevin O'Sullivan has offered. Think about that for a second. <laughs> there's two ninth graders in this tournament that, that have offers from crazy. the University of Florida Frank, and have both committed. Trent and I were talking. And this Trent came back, back to your point about Roper. He's a really, really good nice player. player yeah. We were talking. I couldn't have played high school. I was a pretty good high school baseball player yeah. in the 10th grade my right. first year. I couldn't have played in the 9th grade. I, I, don't, I, I don't think I could have made the team in the 9th yeah, grade. Yeah, you, know, you know, it's funny. They're it, in the 9th grade now, Frank. I know. And, 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 that, and, and I'm trying to think, when did that start? When did when, it probably and it went 15 ish years ago, 10, 15 years ago? No, before that. Before because that? Because you, you graduated early 80s. Right. I would bet by 90 or Was so. Was it that long ago? I think high schoolers Ninth. were. In, yeah. As we see another uh, pass ball. Boy, um, or kind of a sloppy handling of the ball, but boy, Bishop Snyder, I noticed this on Monday as well. They're aggressive, buddy. Yeah. They make you make plays. They put the pressure on. They run when they can. Yeah, and something else you're going to see in this tournament now, and you know this, and we talk about it. The FHSAA allows 
two games this week. They're both technically exhibition games. So that's all. And then your real season starts on Monday. So everybody's using a lot of pitchers. They want to mm -hmm. win the game because you want to get the feel of win. But everybody's using a lot of people, which is why it can be a little bit, uh, it can feel haphazard at times, I think. Wilkins finds the ball. It just got right under him. Glad you brought that up as well. Preseason classic, two games. They don't count in the standings, but this entire week has a district feel about it. Yep. And I think the coaches love that. Yes, the games don't count, but if these two teams played a practice game on a random Wednesday at four, there wouldn't be the intensity. It's, yeah. it's, it's a one location. There's a bunch of people here. There's radio, there's media, there's TV. It, it changes. It makes it feel more special than just a basic preseason game that really doesn't count. Well, that's a big part of it, Terry. I think, number one, we did our radio show here all week long. Correct. So we're talking about all these players. Number two, if you win your first game, you're on television. We got you on the call with Trent. Uh, the, the Gemstone uh, production people are so good. Uh, our friends at uh, Channel 4 and TV, uh, CW17, yep. kind enough to televise all these games. And again, tip of the cap to our friends at High School 912 who coordinate all this. That's what makes it a big deal for these guys. I'm telling you, they this uh, this has become, district feel is the right sure. phrase. They, they, you said that right. There is a district, district feel to this. I think you're 100% right. And you can sense it when you walk by those dugouts. Sure, sure. Bates to the plate for Bishop Snyder. They lead 5-2. And a big, ugly five on the scoreboard for Panavita. They've kicked around where they just haven't been clean defensively. Yeah, which, again, that, part of that's a product of it being early in the year. Uh, but, uh, but, but, again, you won't, I, I'll bet you when you see Panavita playing in uh, late March, it won't feel that way. You know, it'll feel that way now because it's, it's very early on. But these are, again, two very fundamentally sound teams. The great Ernie Banks, and we've talked about this, he, he coined the phrase, let's play two, I believe, right? Mm -hmm. the great Beautiful day, let's play let's two. Let's play two. Did anybody ever say, let's play three? Because <laughs> we play three in this yeah, tournament. three, you're exactly right. Three games that. today. This is game two. We yeah. got another great nightcap coming up between yeah. Bartram Trail and First Coast. Yeah, you're, like, you your trainer going to be hoarse. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, we did it last year, and it's, yeah. it's worth it. Yeah, but, it, but you're exactly right. God, the weather is so fantastic today, too. And it's, uh, you know, we did it a little bit different this year. I will tell you this. Um, first person has heard this. We have, we have had an auction with this tournament last year but there was so much going on to run a baseball tournament all week long and have an auction they were actually gonna have our first ever golf tournament on June 6th this year and so we're gonna combine the auction with that so that's what people ask me why there weren't auction items a little button run here Frank and the reason there weren't auction items is we're saving that for the golf tournament great throw by the pitcher to Gooley for the out uh, oh, pardon me for going ahead. yeah so a golf tournament coming up in June and then all the auction items that were here last year will now be at, uh, at that uh, at that golf tournament. How about that? That was a heck of a play, by the way. Really nice play, play, getting off the mound. Kind of a button run with a guy going to third. <laughs> um, your major league guys, are they just being stupid? Because if we have games like this on TV and a bunch of great college games, I'm fine. Yeah, one of the most frust baseball. frustrating things in the world to me is how the players and the owners can't get together in the sport I love so much. But look, everybody's fighting for their, their piece of the pie. Yeah. Yeah. And because... Because the union, the baseball union is so strong, that's why there's not a salary cap, and that's why uh, their labor fights are so hard. I think we're going to, we, we're obviously going to lose some playing time this year. They backed up spring training a week. I think you're going to see that backed up even further. Slow roller out to third, long throw across is in time. Want to make sure he held on to it. So Panavita finally retires the side, but a lot of damage done by the Cardinals of Bishop Schneider. Frank, thanks so much yeah. for A, spending some time, and B, what you do and your entire team for these uh, these wonderful kids. We appreciate it. Terry, I appreciate you being out here and Trent being out here and then our front friends at CW17. It's a blast. I'm going to grab some more fun. You're doing a great job. We appreciate it, bro. Schneider leading Panavita 5-2. Back after this. Life happens. Reality strikes. Priority shift and you find yourself in a place you never dreamed. But then, opportunity emerges. A flame you thought was out reignites. Redefine your future. It's your turn. FSCJ. Power comes in many different forms. We depend on it everywhere we go. It's in our homes, our offices, our stores, our factories and plants. We are the experts who harness it and deliver it to you. We are the Powering America team of North Florida. The best trained, most skilled, and safest electricians in the world. The very definition of value in every job we do. The Powering America team of North Florida. Life gets real. Time flies. You can lose who you are in the grind. But then, opportunity knocks. Will you choose to answer this time? Rediscover what makes you tick. It's your turn. FSCJ. 
midway through game number two of three here on a gorgeous Saturday at the high school 912 preseason baseball classic benefiting walk-off charities the fourth annual we've been kind enough or actually fortunate enough meet myself Terry Norvell and Trent and Torsia. We've broadcast on Saturday now two years in a row. Twelve teams got this thing started at the first of the week. Everybody plays two games. And as you see, Walk-Off Charities creates free youth baseball leagues for over 200 kids. You heard Frank Frangie a moment ago talking about what all they've done for the young people in our community, exposing them to baseball, getting them organized in, in extracurricular. They all get a free glove. They all get a, uh, a hot dog lunch when they come on clinics and uh, field trip days. The Duval County Public Schools are involved setting up the mostly inner city type schools and they get them over here and they expose them to baseball it's just a wonderful wonderful uh collaboration as we welcome trenton torcia back to the uh broadcast and uh boy snyder is relentless um up to bat and uh this guy the pitcher for snyder rablewski he's got off the hook a little bit that offense helped him out a little bit of a bulldog isn't he yeah it really now, is let, here's your job as a pitcher you come out they were in the field. Pontevedra was in the field a long time. You throw strikes right away. You get your team back up to the plate as quickly as you can. That takes the air out of the sails for sure, Terry. And didn't you love his offense, Rapluski's offense, picking him up? Uh, gave up a couple long balls, and the offense came out and said, we'll get you three. Big man, just keep in there. Stay in there. Chopper to third. Sun was tough. Throw will be late. High chopper. He had to fight the sun. Lost his footing a little bit, did the third baseman over there, Barazueta, and that should be an infield uh, base hit here. The big man got down the line, though. Sure did. We well, fought the sun, didn't he? <laughs> I tell you. He did. He really did. So here we go again. Boy, the pitchers dominated early, and here come the, uh, here come the sticks. I know that was a seeing-eye single to a degree, but here they come again. Base runner nonetheless. Absolutely. Let's see. It, now let's go back to the, the two times that Ponte Vedra has taken off before the pitchers deliver the pitch. What are we thinking on the base pass doing that? Mac Wilkins, the catcher for Ponte Vedra to the plate. Can the Sharks answer? I know talking to Coach Stanton, he said these base runners are on their own and sometimes they see stuff that he doesn't see and He's not going to call them out during the game, but they're going to have a conversation. And I'd like to know what those two guys were thinking. I know. Just take off. Are you trying to force balk? Are you impatient knowing you're going to steal? And the pitcher varies his time sets, which he's sure. supposed to do. Called strike. Yeah, there's being aggressive, and there's also running yourself out of inning. You know, running yourself out of a monster inning. Well, they've done it twice. Sure. For the third out. Rapluski ready. Here's his breaking ball. Chopped at the plate by Wilkins. He's still pumping strikes, though, isn't he? Wilkins with a strikeout. Swinging on a probably one of the best breaking balls he's thrown all day. Tries to go back to it there. 0-2. Maybe I elevate a fastball here. Rambler on deck. Missed an elevated pitch there. 0-2. Found it straight back, 0-2. It was elevated. We do have action in the Snyder bullpen. Can't catch the number uh, quite yet, but we'll let you know when we do. And uh, we're probably nearing the point where we're getting to a, a pitch count limit. You know, it is preseason. It is early. And uh, this is when it gets tough on a, the skipper. Preseason game doesn't count. Tight game, good team, but it, but state the game, count. but it does count, but it doesn't count. There's a breaking ball, stays up high. There's some table stakes here. For sure. If nothing else, I mean, if you're a coach, you're a player, you put the uniform on and you go yeah. out and you want to compete. And sometimes you get caught in a moment and uh, it's tough to pull the hook. Snyder, it's, 3A, Ponavitor, 6A. It'd be a nice little statement win as there's a good breaking ball that takes Wilkins down again. 
for the first out of the inning. That'll bring up Rambler. Here's a pitch again. <clears throat> Good location. Well, bottom fell out of that, didn't it? Boy, I thought Hogue was good, too. Boy, Hogue was good. The lefties. I like him. Sophomore. Man, he was good. Big frame. Got a lot of growing to do. I can see him being in the low 90s by his senior year. Sure. Cole Rambler. 6'3", 185-pounder. Runner going. And another stolen base. Boy, these teams are aggressive. They, we knew they were going to be. Yeah. And he had a huge jump there. Right? You get a runner in scoring position. If you could somehow look at that jump. He's. My goodness. That's the big guy that got down the line, too, on a little chopper. Kessel. Kessel, yeah. Nobody. One and no pitch. Breaking ball stays outside. I just, at this level, I'll never understand a 1-0 breaking ball. It just, it just <laughs> doesn't make sense to me, but I'm not calling the pitches. Fastball down low and out. Until you go 2-0 and you try to get fine, now you're 3-0. you got to fight all the way back. The hitter's just looking to box one up and drive it, right? Go, go. And there's a four-pitch walk. Two on, one out for the Sharks. Hartman to the plate. You know who follows Hartman? <laughs> the, the two Dinger guy, the Dinger Ru brothers. Ruth and Gary, Gary yeah. and Ruth. <laughs> <laughs> two boys that went yard. And that might be that a call to the a, bullpen. Maybe a pitch count here now. And I think I think the uh, the guy in the pen had already gotten loose, didn't he? He get, well, he was getting hot in a hurry. He was getting tell. hot in a hurry, and uh, they got the infield ball coming out. So yeah, maybe changing gloves and things like that inside. It looks like uh, well, what are we doing here, Trinis? <laughs> Did Mister? Uh, Rabluski talked his way to staying into the game. If you you name me a pitcher that ever want to leave a game, how about that? It was just a quick visit. It looks like they fooled us with the off-speed pitch, Terry. <laughs> and you're right. There was a guy in the pen for get, five to ten minutes. And he hot sat down. So, nonetheless, Hartman to the plate. Couple on, one out. Ponavitar trying to answer back. Bishop Schneider leading 5-2. Doesn't that make a coach look good when he goes out to the mound to visit? The next pitch is yes. painted for a strike. I said throw a strike. Breaking ball just outside. I think your catcher wanted that. I think Kellum wanted that one. <laughs> Fastball hit hard. That finds a gap. One run coming around third. One runner coming around third. Will score. RBI single. Runners on the corners. And here come the Sharks. Here come the Sharks. That pitch was up out over the plate. Look at the good piece of hitting right here. Take it where it's pitched. Ball's on the outside third of the plate. And another opposite field hit. So on the corners, and guess who's coming? The Gizinski plate. with Mitchell on deck, and they both homered their last at bat. And they only saw one pitch apiece. Oh, they almost ran the throws right out. away. Yes, he's he, got him. Five, 
Okay. Well, he looks intimidating in that box, doesn't he? As a breaking ball nearly caught him on the shoulder. I thought it did. I think we threw him. So 5-3, uh, Ponteviter trying to fight back in this I thing. I put the runner in motion here. And there's the best fast play he's throwing in a while, location-wise, wasn't it? I'm predicting a, uh, you got a one-two count. A little breaking ball here, send the runner. Hanging breaking ball. Doesn't get the call. I got half of it right anyway. Boy, he looks intimidating in that box, doesn't he? <laughs> He's a big boy, big too. Big tall guy. Got the flow hanging out of the helmet. Nice swag. 2-1 pitch coming up. Here it is. Ooh. Chased a high fastball. Infield pop and wow. Third baseman makes the catch, little, but it was an adventure. Little adventurous there. So that is the second out of the inning, but Mitchell, who homered his first at bat, he steps to the plate. Boy, he helped him out with a high pitch here. Here's his last at bat, Mitchell. That is not in the strike zone. Man, back to back, two pitches in a row, and two new baseballs handed to the pitcher. That got out. Final batter, no matter what, for Rabluski here. Gotta be. You would think. He's already kind of fought his way in once. And Never again. You want to protect the player, too. I mean, I, I get the whole competitive thing, but do right by the kid, you know. I don't exactly know what his pitch count's at, but he's got to be, he's got to be close to 60 pitch. You would think. These are two pretty good seven and eight hole hitters. They look pretty good, don't they, for your seven and eight hole? They got some pop, that's for sure. <laughs> so there's a rumor that between games, you might have talked to the guy that owns the house that was having the big time out there in the outfield. I did indeed. And he's getting some free baseball, isn't he, watching from his house. And there's another fly ball. Hit off the end of the bat. Shortstop goes back, makes the catch. And that'll retire the side. Ponteveter gets one more, and they're still right in this game. Despite five errors, Ponteveter hanging tough with Bishop Snyder. The Bishop Snyder Cardinals coming to bat, leading 5-3. to three. Make your day with a double dose of two and a half men and mom. It's not funny. Maybe not funny. Ha ha, but certainly funny. Hee <laughs> hee. Two hours of laughs every weeknight. Good Lord, man, you're a genius. I'm so happy for us. Shh. Don't tell anybody. I have to tell everybody. <laughs> back to back episodes of Two and a Half Men and Mom. Weeknight starting at 5 on CW17. What if you had Bruce Wayne's money? I'm Batman. The Big Bang Theory presents the Batman sweepstakes. You could win the $5,000 grand prize or movie passes to experience the Batman only in theaters. I'm the vengeance. Plus $500 daily cash prizes. Watch Big Bang weeknights for the character of the day. Text it to 55225 or fly to BigBangTheoryWeeknights.com. Who are you under there? I'm Batman. <laughs> weeknights at 7 on CW17. The hits are tied up at five hits apiece. But Bishop Snyder leads Ponteveder five to three. Look the at difference that ugly in the number. game is the five errors under the uh, E number. column for Ponteveder. Trenton Torch is here. I'm Terry Norvell. We're about halfway through this mid-game, middle game of three here at the Walk-Off Charities preseason baseball classic. And it looks like we've got a new pitcher for Ponteveder. Is, is it Kellum? Uh, uh, let me catch that number. I'm trying to see the number. And there's where our buddy was at watching the game. Boy, you got to love the chain link fence when you've got the house outside, you know, right field. Look at that. Free nice, baseball. Nice pool there. Free baseball. Man. Wonder from, there he is. Hey, there he is. There's our buddy. <laughs> man, it's like a pretty good setup this guy's got. Looks like he has a blue bottle of water there, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, it's blue water. Sure. Nice cold water. 
I might have been invited over for one of those waters. And the new pitcher right there, number 22, Cole Mitchell, who's already hit a home run in this ball game. Now he goes on to the mound. And uh, Mitchell, another one of those big, strong guys that hits down low in the order. Mitchell. So they call him a right-handed pitcher and a utility guy. Is that utility, yeah. utility home run hitter? Man, this team was 13 and 15 a year ago, Ponavidra, but they went to run to the regional finals. We got hot at the right time. And again, Trent, you're you're very connected in baseball in our area here in North Florida, and uh, that is a baseball area out there. That that Ponavidra, Bartram, that part of our North Florida area, really, really, gr they've got great uh, what do you call it, travel ball. They've got and, and talk talk about that a little bit. Is yeah, I mean in. Um, even the recreational programs are, are strong. It's strong in numbers. It's the most St. John's County, the high growth area sure. of Jacksonville. And I mean, they just they just built one new high school and they got another high school that they're building should be done in a couple of years. So it's 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 no doubt. They take their baseball the, serious out there, good. too. They, no, really they love do their baseball. Kellum King and LeClaire, the three scheduled this half inning for Bishop Snyder. They really do. They take it seriously. They love their baseball out there. What is that? Tekoi Creek, I guess, is built, if I'm pronouncing it correctly. One of the new schools in that area, too, I think. And the growth is back. Remember that area took off. It's away. almost like Ponte Vedra, which is a fairly new school. Sure. By, you know, by school standards. Yeah. Is the old. Yeah. <laughs> kind of the you know, this Bishop Snyder school is not that old either. No. Over on the west side. Good piece of hitting. Kept his hands back and drove it right up the middle. Leadoff single. Here we go. Kelm's on with King coming up the bat. I talk about hitting all the time with, with people and players. Watch his hands. They stay oh, inside nice. the baseball. Pitch is a little bit in, probably, you know, inside third of the plate. Just keep your hands inside the ball and flick it out to the outfield. That if he gets nice. around that pitch, it's a one hopper to the third baseman. Ball gets away from the catcher. So again, here we go. Snyder, they take advantage of everything you do wrong defensively. And I think Great pressure on tried catchers, to, yeah. He tried to glove that ball. You've got to drop and block right there. Yep. Keep it in front of you. But they force you because they're bouncing off the base. They're aggressive first. And they force you to make the play. And you figure you start figuring that out as the game goes on. Sure. A catcher, you, you figure that out, man. They're going to be bouncing. And Snyder did that from the jump, didn't they? Break them all high and away. Gotta love this windup. Watch this windup. Watch the stretch to wind up. I love it. He went behind the head there for a little bit. Let's see if we can get a shot of the pitcher here in this, uh, this stretch here. Watch this, Trent. I like it a lot. I don't know what it is, but it just looks cool. And you keep throwing breaking balls like that, he can wind he can do, up any way he wants. You do that all day long. Flip the ball behind your back if you want. That's nice. Hard hit ground ball right at the second base. Been cleanly fielded. Runner will advance to third, but the out is recorded. Hartman to... Kuczynski. You know what I love about that at bat? You move a runner over. Sure. Took an outside. Ball's on the outer part of the plate. Left-handed hitter. It's almost the easiest thing as a hitter to sure. do. Just roll over on it. Hit a ground ball behind the runner. Now you got a runner in scoring position. Less than two outs. LeClaire is your batter. I just remembered where I've seen that pitcher's stretch move. That's an old Intorsia dance move, isn't it? <laughs> I see that in the uh, late 80s, early 90s when you were on the dance floor. I had hair like that, too. <laughs> no picture, no proof. If we don't see a picture of that, no proof. Those are in a vault. On one count, two LeClaire in a 5-3 ball game. 
tries to turn into one there. You can hear their dugout telling them, you got to wear that thing. Big slow breaking ball. You got to wear it. Michael Berger on deck. Oh my. Bottom dropped out of that, didn't it? Sure did. I'd go right back to it. He's thrown two pretty good ones in a row. Ponavitor bringing the infield in now. We're starting to get late. Remember high school baseball, seven innings. And McClare says that hit him. He didn't want to go back to the dugout without getting hit. <laughs> so he said that hit me, coach, uh, Mr. Blue. And they're going to talk about it again. That's home plate umpire. Sean Evans calling down to his first base umpire mate, Butch Braddock. Brannock. What are they talking about? Did he look, try to lean into it? I mean, that's the only thing I, I can mean, imagine yeah. they're talking about. Evans, Evans had the best view. He was right next to the batter, right? In terms of did it hit him in the elbow or not. Let's take a look at it. Another slow breaking ball. I think that hit his, at worst, it hit his uh, jersey, didn't it? Talk to me there, Trent. Yeah, I see the jersey move, but I also see somebody leaning into a pitch. That's the pitcher in you, isn't it? Yeah. 3-2 pitch, and that hit seam foul ball, ball four. What was it? That could be one of anything. Did it hit the bat? Did it hit the helmet? I don't know. Why is he staring down the pitcher? I mean, I... Yeah, he wanted to hit him so bad. He threw four consecutive slow breaking balls. Let's do it on the first here pitch. Here we go. Let's see what happened. What, what sort of happened here? Did it hit the helmet? Did it hit the bat? Did it just go right to the glove? And there's the steer down. Are we going to call that a base on ball? Uh, H -B -B -B, yeah, BB, I guess. HP. BB is the official call there. Still only one out. Runners on the corners. Boy, Ponavita needs to put up a zero on that board. So I've got a, another pinch hitter here, Siebert. And he lays down a bunt. Where will the play be? Tried to scoop to the catcher. Safe. Ball is dropped. Wilkins came out in front of the plate as well. So another run will score. Small ball at its best. And it's 6-3. Uh, Bishop Snyder make that. Pretty good bunt here, though. Not bad. Wilkins is calling for first. That's why he got away from the point. And then he had no chance. But... He was going to concede the run, get the out. Now they give the run and don't get the out. It's a read play there. Sure. And, you know, probably in that instance, take the out. Pitcher basically was in a do or die situation, right? So he tries to flip with the glove. That is not Correct. an easy play. Come on, yeah, first or second. Bears your batter. Well, they keep the pressure on you, don't they? It's the little things. It is. It is the little things with this team. And you know what? It it, it drives as a pitcher. It drives me nuts. Straight. I like straight up baseball. And um, but I give you know give them credit. They're executing. Again, there's the pressure. You know you've got to make a pitch. You know you've got to block a ball and keep it in front of you. It's constant pressure. Ball and dirt. They're running. I mean they're 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 taught that way. So they got two runners in scoring position. Still one out. This is, you know, infield looks like they're going to be drawn in. I said it last game. This raises batting average when that infield comes in. Wilkins again fighting some pitches in the dirt. That'll score a run all the way to the plate. And the run, batter runner does not stop. Runs straight to second base and he'll make it. Never stopped. This good aggressive baseball. Forcing the catcher to make a what a hundred and what foot throw, you know, a long throw. Well, it's 120 from yeah, the plate to second. Yeah. So. And I mean, watch the if if, the, if if he stays in frame, watch the batter runner. Okay, ball gets by the catcher, runs going to score easy. Watch the batter runner; he does not stop. See the second baseman, and that's a, look look how far that throw is. 
you've got to hit that perfect. Even a perfect throw and, doesn't get him, boy. And, he just and Snyder takes their chances. They'll play the odds. I still think you're gonna block that pitch. I mean, it's it's in the Agreed. dirt. I get it. It's a wild pitch. Agreed. Ortiz, the batter for Snyder, as they've played it another. They lead seven three. This game sure feels closer than a four run game, though, doesn't? It? I guess maybe the home runs swayed me. Those back to back home runs, but boy, Snyder has kept the pressure on Panavita with the infield in. They have to. We're in the fifth of a seven inning game. And Ortiz, by the way, great piece of hitting last time. How nice was that? Opposite field single. In, inside out swing. I mean, that's classic. You teach it, but it's hard to execute it. And he did a great job with that little little double piece down the left field line. Yeah, he got two on that, didn't Scored he? Scored two, yeah. Well, he got a double got two, and knocked yeah. into. Yeah. So it's been a tough outing for that pitcher there. Number 22, Mitchell. And he gets a little help possibly. Is that deep enough? We'll see. And he is going. The runner tags. The throw is offline. And both runners, smart baseball, both runners advance. He missed the cutoff. And it is another run for Bishop Snyder. Terry, any surprise to you? He's tagging on that. That is a shallow fly ball right there. And again, well coached team. The runner at second goes back and he's tagging the whole way as well. He's yeah. reading that play in front of him. If it gets cut, you know, he takes a few chop steps. And if he, he sees it not getting cut, he's off. He's off. Jack Roper, the leadoff batter, steps in. And he goes opposite field. Not a lot of carry. And it's caught for the third out of the inning, but more damage done by Bishop Snyder. They plate two more, and they've extended their lead over Ponavedra, seven to three. Brassfield and Gorey, we work daily to build diversity in our workforce, increase collaboration with minority partners, and promote a culture that embraces new ideas and strengthens communities. It's more than a company commitment. Valuing diversity and inclusion helps us live out our purpose of building exceptional people, trusting relationships, great projects, and strong communities. It's about opening doors to new talent and perspectives that will make us even better, more innovative, safe and successful. On a picture perfect Saturday afternoon, about a month before spring, we are playing hardball. We're playing three, one in the books, halfway through the, the second. And Bishop Snyder is leading here in this ball game, game two of three, you see Rabluski now behind the plate. He was your starting pitcher for Bishop Snyder, and we were told he's one heck of an athlete, maybe one of their better hitters. So Rabluski, how about that day? Yeah. How about, about that day for you as I'm no Shawaniak wonder. is on the hill now for Bishop Snyder, number five, Kyle Shawaniak. Taking him out for the Cardinals. Let's go, Joven! 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 Let's go, Joven!
Bowman leading off here for Pontevedra. They just, Trent and Torsia, they just can't get a zero. They need to put a zero on the board. This uh, Bishop Snyder team is just scrappy. Scrappy. They don't stop, right? Let the track meet begin from the first out of the game. 8-3, Bishop Snyder leading, and they've gone 2-3-3 three, three in the last three innings. Oops. Called strike there. That's uh, kind of gratuitous. There's an opposite. Good piece of hitting there. That ball was hit hard. Really Long, good piece. loud single. And here come the Sharks. Anytime you go opposite field with a little bit of authority, just take what the pitcher gives you. The ball's in the outside part of the plate. I know I've said it all day, but we've seen a lot of good hitting. So where are we at here? How big is this? That was the nine-hole hitter. He's on first base. Clean single. Starting to get late in this ball game. You're going to have to put up some runs here. This could be a huge inning here for both teams. Ponteveter's got to scratch a few here because they've shown no chance of stopping Bishop Snyder offensively. No, they haven't. And, you know, it's it, it's relentless baseball, but there's there's a lot of fight in that Ponteveter dugout, too. That was behind the batter, wasn't it? Sure was. Runner goes, and he's safe. And it looks like a pinch hitter here, Item. Kate Item is up to bat. Yes, Kate Item. Your pitch hitter, that ball was behind him, wasn't it? Yeah. <laughs> was it <laughs> see, wasn't this. exactly a pitch out. Watch this. What do you, what's the opposite of a pitch out? <laughs> pitch in, I guess, yes. Pitch in. <laughs> we kid because we care. Well, that was funny. How's it not hit him? So Cade Item, 5'9", 165. Yeah, how does he, how does he not back into it? Item with a strong single, so back-to-back -back singles. Of course, hold the runner at third, and that'll possibly, no, nope, good piece of uh, baseball right there. The batter runner was looking to get to second, but he read that well. Everybody played that well. Everybody played it well. Unnecessary throw to second base sure. because sure. if that ball sails on you, well, very aggressive turn at first. First of all, he laces it to right. So the pinch hitter does his job. Here we go. How many pinch hitters have we seen get hits today? Man. We, we saw three in a row in game one. Speaking Another of, it looks up. like Bryce Hall will pinch hit here. There's a good look at Bryce Hall and Coach Tom Stanton. I mentioned a moment ago, here is the, uh, this was a, this is an important part of this ball game. Really got, important part of this ball game. Now we got first and third, nobody out. And an animated, is that Coach uh, Osbeck? An animated coach on the mound. You know, he's probably talking about defensive setup, setup right here. First of all, you've got a first and third situation. What play are we going to run here? Sure. Because you got to imagine Stanton's got him in motion. And, uh, you know, defensively, what are we doing here? we got a five-run lead, so we're probably playing corners in. Sure. Leave the middle. And that, Middle's going to play back. That looks like the defensive alignment. Middle for two. We'll take the double play and give up the run. But watch the, watch for this runner to go early in the count. Bryce Hall, 6'2", 180-pounder, swinging at the first pitch, chops it foul. But you also can feel this game, the way it's played out. Ponte Vedra and Coach Stanton, a, a one spot here is not going to do it. No. They're, they can't one spot their way back into this thing, right? Good point. Down 8-3, getting late. Need a crooked number. Yeah, two on, nobody out. Count even at one now. But I do have a question for you. If you have your pitcher on a pitch count, why is he behind the dish? Interesting. Pitch again just misses. Shawaniak, the uh, pitcher now. On the hill for Bishop Snyder. Man, this is fun. The pitch up high gets by the catcher, but not far enough for the runner at first to advance. Boy, that would have been big. Get him to second base out of the double play. 
And that's why they teach progressive secondary leads. Sure. Ball on the ground, you got to be gone. Pitch stays up high, but he swings right through it, does Hall. I mean, I like the the aggressive three run swing, but it's got to be your pitch. Sure, a little that high. elevated pitch. A little high not, out. Yep. Not anybody's pitch. Well, I know you've got to do that, but boy, that's gutsy with all that foul territory. <laughs> I mean, that is gutsy. I know you got to keep that guy. You're trying to help your infield out uh, you and could, keep the double play in order. But my goodness, that could rattle down there for a couple days. You could throw a triple in a <laughs> yes, hurry. Yes, you could. Oh, and he comes another through elevated with another fastball. elevated fastball and gets what we think is a big, big out there. And, and if you look, the pitch is a little bit up. Two strikes, so you don't want to leave it up to the umpire, although that is out of the zone. But the other thing is, situationally, you've got to do a job there. Schmidt, another pinch hitter for Ponte Runner going, ground ball. And it gets through. Wow, a seeing eye helper for Ponte They score a run on the corners with only one out. <laughs> Trenton Torsia, you, you brought some fun to this game today, buddy. Game two, living up well, to his advertising. We talked about it earlier. Your runner takes off. Now you got guys yep. moving. Got guys moving. Look at there. Look at there. Off the glove. You're probably only getting one anyway on that. You're not Absolutely. getting, you're not getting, you're not getting two. the force play at second. But still, another pinch hit, base hit. Pinch hit or base hit. This is crazy. Happened all afternoon. We're five for five on that. Is this Wilkins here at the plate? Yes. Boy, he's due for a hit. He's had a tough, tough day behind the plate. A lot of balls in the dirt. I mean, even, even a sack fly here, just something to drive in a run, get it, you know, within striking distance. I will say this though, boys, Pontevedra, they will be really disappointed if they get out of here with only one run. Really disappointed. No, this has to be a. Wilkins has power. You said it at the, the beginning of the, the bottom half of the inning. You said that yeah. one run one run each inning is not going to get it done for him. I'm not positive Bishop Snyder's done yet. Odds would, say, yeah. odds would say they're not. The important pitch, swing and a miss. Oh, big strikeout. Big, big strikeout. Huge pitch right there. So Cole Ramble comes to the plate, and Ponte desperate to plate a couple more runs this inning. But here we go again with a runner on third, less than two outs. We can't get him across. And I know I'm harping on that, but that's the small part of the game that wins you games may not seem like much but added up three or four times during a game and we've seen it on both sides and I mean I guarantee you both of those coaches are putting that down as game mistakes chop foul to coach Stanton who makes a nice play got good hands nice he? real nice for a catcher He looks like my old high school catcher, Freddie Gonzalez. How is Freddie? He's doing great. Doing good? Yeah, he's still, still coaching him up. I usually talk to him every spring. Here we go, Rambler. Rambler with a hard hit ball. That's going to get down for an RBI base hit. And the runner's trying to get to third, and he will from first. And here come the Sharks. Here come the Sharks. Rambor with a big two out RBI single. Standing tall and just drives it opposite field. Boy, you trying to roll that thing over? You're in the dugout. It's a one hopper to the third base. Sure I said it earlier, but good piece. We've seen a lot of good opposite field hitting today. And that's a thing of beauty. If you could do that, you know how to hit. Now we got a first and third situation, two outs. Does Coach Stanton try a little trickery here? 
little first and third, maybe try and steal your stop own. halfway. Yeah, I mean, eight five. And what play does Snyder have called in this situation? Run, absolutely, runners on the corners, and the batter is hit by the pitch. They are loaded. And guess who's up to bat? One of the guys that went long ball in this ball game. Bases loaded. After after this, oh, we're taking a look at this home run. Look at that ball. Hey, that was that was the Oppo Cruncho. One swing in the bat, and we got a different ball game here, sir. Both teams, what heart, man! These guys battle, don't they? Both of these teams. Oh, big swing on a breaking ball that was low and away. There's nowhere to put him, but my gosh, it's, it'd be tough to give in to him, too, wouldn't it? Sure would be. Oh, took something off. Change what up. was that? Yes, that sir. Change up. What was that? What, what a good pitch. It was gorgeous is what it was. Oh, my. Had a little arm side run and sink to it. Do you go back to that? I might elevate a fastball here and then go back to it. No. Nope. Good job by the catcher. You've got to keep that in front soft. Somehow yep. in front. Well, he blocked it up nicely. In front and soft. And you know what I mean by it, you know? Yeah. Oh, a pitcher wanted that one just inside. Good eye. How do you hold off on that? What a battle. That's what the pitcher saying. How do you not swing yes. at that? What a battle, even at twos. Here's the pitch outside. Not far enough for an advance, and you don't want to take the bat out of that guy's hands, obviously, with uh, everybody running. 3-2-2. Two, two, two. Everybody we got, running. We got runners in motion. Da, 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 da. Here we go. Everybody running. Gap shot here. We got a oh tight ball game. Here we go. The pitch of record so far in this ball game. Chopped at the plate. Going to be a tough play. And it is made. Good play by the pitcher. Making the throw. Damage done, but it could have been a lot worse. Heck of a play right there. Bishop Snyder gets to the dugout. Only allowing two. And they continue leading Fonavidra 8-5 as we head to the sixth. Get fast, reliable internet for any budget. Act now to get Xfinity Internet for a great low price. Or visit Xfinity.com slash free to see if you qualify for the Affordable Connectivity Program. Qualifying customers can get free high-speed internet for more streaming, chatting, and gaming on all your devices. Ready for more value? Add Xfinity Mobile for as little as $15 a month. Go to Xfinity.com slash free, call 1-800-XFINITY, or visit a store today. Where's your entourage? I'm kind of doing the college moving thing solo. How come you bring single? Brand new, yeah, everything brand new. College is about starting over, right? Cause she loves you, man. It's like, what if I'm not good enough? It's basically, you're scared every damn day. May the best woman win. We have this. All American Homecoming. New series premieres this Monday at 9, 8 central. Only on The CW. Welcome back to beautiful San Susi ballpark on the south side of Jacksonville. Beautiful day and a good game cooking as Bishop Snyder leads Ponte Vedra 8 to 5. Our great sponsors that make this event happen for Tegra. Let's reach new heights together. CSI Companies, your workforce solutions reimagined. Butters Barbecue, real pit barbecue since 1949. Airstream Ventures Business, Entertainment, Sports, and Duval Motor Company, probably serving Northeast Florida since 1916. And they are sponsoring a good one. <laughs> a fun baseball game. As advertised. What a fun one to do, too. And I got, we got action. Cole Rambler on the hill. You don't see, we went, we, we just went, uh, Back-to-back -back Coles, right? Call to the bullpen by back-to-back -back Coles there. Yeah. We got action in the Snyder bullpen. I think that's their closer. This could potentially be the last inning, Terry, just based on the on the two-hour rule. Is that right? And we're right at it. 
So obviously the inning starts. We've got to play the inning. But this could potentially be the last inning. And was that Roper down there? Roper the freshman. In the pin? Hmm. I think he's their closer. Nico Bates to the plate here for the Cardinals. So Snyder. Will Snyder answer again. I Snyder's know where you're going. <laughs> led the whole way. I guess the two home runs tied it briefly. But Snyder's kept the pressure on and kept the lead. And there's a quick strikeout. One up, one down. Shawaniak to the plate who made the nice play to end the half inning. So, yeah, didn't we have Cole Mitchell on the hill a moment ago? Yep. We went Cole to Cole. Yeah, we got a big Rambler, big kid at 6'3", 185 pounds. They got some beef in that dugout, don't they? They really do. We play in the sixth. It's been a good one. 8-5 Bishop Snyder, 3A baseball squad against the 6A Ponte Vedra Sharks. And Mr. Entorsi, as we see another high away ball, if you can handle one more, we've got uh, Mark from Trail and First Coast hanging around here ready to do this two game, battle about 7 o'clock. If you can game, handle it, old man. This game has energized me. Are you kidding? Low fastball called strike. It's been fun. These two well, teams are good. Another two teams duking it out later on, too, in a couple hours. Sure. To wind the pitch right down the middle for a called strike. If you're Rambler here, you just, you, you got to get, you got to put a zero up. Stop the bleeding. Good looking pitch. That's kind of the way to do it. Grab the outside the corner, yes, and that's the way to do it, isn't it? Hey, go strike out a couple guys and get us back in the dugout. So two quick outs. And Kellum to the plate for the Cardinals. You know, that's a tough pitch right there but as a hitter, but you know what? You cannot put it in the hands of the umpire. No. No. Fouled off the fist for a strike. You know, Wilkins did a good job sticking the pitch. Not a stolen strike there. Too close to take, though, with two strikes. Here we go, Rambler. Sun's slowly going down here. You know, daylight savings time, I believe, is March 13th. Not that I'm watching. I don't like when it gets dark early. I, like I can't the daylight stand I think it's March 13th. I start watching about three months before. I'm like, come on. You know, that law for daylight savings has been sitting in the Senate for like six years. Yes, it has. It's been approved in Florida. Why haven't we done it? I know my golfing buddies can't wait for it to change either, you know? Get out and get that Two late nine count. holes of golf. Sure, in. absolutely. The wind the pitch. After a is outside. <clears throat> long day of work. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I heard a guy come up with a new word. He calls it golfist. Golf's Love. office. I'm at the golfers. Chopper out to short. Let me get a long throw. And it is made easy. One of the easier half innings Panavitra's recorded on Bishop Snyder. As we head to the bottom of the sixth inning, Panavitra looking for some more offense, trailing Bishop Snyder 8 5. We build ideas for clients. Uh, they typically have an idea or a concept of what kind of project they're going to build. And I think as long as we're involved at the very beginning and we bring realistic budgets and uh, realistic processes that they enjoy, that we can actually build it versus just talking about it. And, you know, we do it as a team. There's 100% transparency. There's uh, a common goal that we're all working towards.
Alive Credit Union is proud to be the official credit union of High School 912. Start earning more and saving more for a financially fit lifestyle that's all your own. Like with their new low-rate first-time auto buyer loan, which means lower payments. Free checking, which puts more money in your pocket. And many other financial solutions that help you bank healthier so you can use the extra savings for what makes you happier. Join today at AliveCU.coop. A live credit union. Bank healthier, live happier. There have been a lot of special plays, but this was a big one a moment ago. Hanavita had already scratched a couple runs across the board, but we have picked this out as the Florida State College at Jacksonville play of the game so far. That throw had to be on the money, and it was. Shawanek made the play, jumped off the mound. And think about it. He's going away from first base. He doesn't have much time to step into that yeah. throw, so it took a strong arm to make that play. you got to love a pitcher that can field his position. So here we go. We're getting word possibly the final inning because of a time issue. It's been fun. It's been a good game. Both of these teams... Both of these teams are better as they walk out of this park than they were when they came in. It's a good point. By playing this game. Good point. They're both better baseball teams just by playing this game this early in this, obviously, preseason. But these cl close games like this build character, too. Another pinch hitter here. Zach Wiles, it looks like. Zach Wiles leading off and Von Vitter needing base runners. Trailing by three, bottom of the six. Ground ball right back up the middle. Gloved by Roper. And it gets by the first baseman. It sounded like it hit his glove. We'll see how that is. Get another, get another look at it. That's and it gets into the dugout. It sounded like it hit the glove. But I don't know about the... Did he land on first base before? It would. We'll see if we can get a replay here. I don't think it hit the dirt. Let's watch it again. The pitcher. So it's one six. And right here, did it hit the? No, it hit the dirt. It did hit the dirt. So he's six, right? And Ponderveter doesn't care. They've got a runner on. That's all they care about. Oh, runner in scoring position. So it takes away the force. Sure. Swing and a miss. Pulled his head out there. It looked like. Joe Hoban, one out of two on the day. He had a nice leadoff single, I think it was, last inning. And how big are those first outs of an inning, too, you know? There's an opposite field poke, and it is run down by Bates out there. <laughs> wow. Oh, um. The ball was hit well. It was hit well, and tailing away from him. My goodness, that gets down. My, we've got an inning here cooking. Got to make that play, though, you know? You've got to make that play. Yeah, I mean, he goes a long way, but really, it's, it's routine. Yeah, corner, you got to make right? that play. You just got to make that. Yes, going away from you, you got to make it. Item, who came in as a pitch hitter a moment ago, swinging again right up the middle. Gosh, he's got a two for two day. And here we come, throw into the infield. Of course, station to station baseball. That run means nothing. Yeah. Absolutely. Station to station baseball. How about this guy? Coach, put me in the lineup. Yeah, I mean, you're. <laughs> Kate Item. Beautiful left handed swing. Not trying to do too much either. Oh. One out. And again, another one of those pinch hitters that's seeing their second at bat, Bryce Hall. In a big spot. Runners on the corners. Ponavita trailing by three with one out here in the bottom of the sixth inning in what has been a really good high school baseball game. Yeah. The track meet continues. Mm. Why not? You're going to. You're still in a situation if you're Bishop Snyder. You got the tying run at the plate. So the runs out in the field don't matter. Nope. And that was assuming this is the last thing in which. Second and third, second and third. 
I love the fact that so many guys have gotten into this game and it's been a tight, good, competitive game. They haven't fallen back, right, with substitutes? No, no. Showing some good depth, and uh, as did Ridgeview in game one. 3-0. and oh. Open base, but that's the tying run. That's... <laughs> and in the dirt, that'll be a ball, and it wasn't close. They are loaded up with one out, and there's going to be a visit on the mound for Schneider. Niederschmidt comes back up. These guys that got pinch hit opportunities <laughs> an inning or two ago are right in the thick of things now. <laughs> but you can't really tell from both teams, these pinch hitters, just to the naked eye, you couldn't say starter backup no. by their approach. They all know what they're doing. No, I mean, we're, if you want to count the second time around, what are we, six for six with pinch hitters? And, and look who's on the bump. And it looks like the freshman, Jackson Roper. This guy's going to be so good. He's good now. It's a freshman. Roper warms up. Let's recalibrate. Let's take a break. Come back. We're heading down the home stretch of a really tight baseball game. When we come back, bases loaded. One out, and the game is on the line. You're watching High School Baseball on CW17. We're CSI Companies. We partner with organizations nationwide to help employers like you find your dream team. You're looking to hire the best of the best, and we've got you covered start to finish. Whether you're hiring for projects or everyday operations, we provide the talent, strategic solutions, and innovative technologies that keep your business ahead of the competition. This is your workforce reimagined. This is CSI Companies. Start ahead. A bachelor's degree is within your reach. Earn your degree in four years or less at FSCJ and open the doors to a rewarding future. Through high-quality programming led by industry professionals, you'll receive an education that leads to a rewarding career. And with support services like online advising and financial aid, it's never been easier to get started. At FSCJ, we're with you every step of the way. Enroll now for spring. FSCJ.edu slash bachelors. If you're just tuning in, well, where you been? We've got an 8-5 game. We've got the bases loaded. We've had a little bit of everything. We've got one team that has committed five errors but still hanging around. We've got that guy, Trenton Torsi. I'm Terry Norvell. And we got another game after this, live on CW17. And we got a freshman on the mound. The base is loaded late And they the handed game. him the baseball. Here we go. And where are we at? Niederschmidt up to bat. <laughs> I believe it's Niederschmidt. One of many pinch hitters that has already been in the game, and it gets back by the catcher, but no need to risk anything. I agree. No need to stumble halfway down, right, third base and give it out away. You're down by three. Play it station to station. Right call right there by the, the, the runner. It's the right call, and it did not have a very good secondary No, he lead. did not. No, he did not. There is he was kind of retreating back, so once you do that, you've got to, you can't go. Roper works out of the full wine, and he should. If he's, that's what he's most comfortable with. He misses high. A little bit of heart pumping here, right? Two kind of high balls. He's over, over, overthrowing over. a little bit. The wind, 2-0 pitch in the dirt. And then you overcorrect it. Over, overthrow, and the catcher had no chance. You just hope, you hope right there. It's got to bounce right yeah. for you. And again, the tying run is at first base. Potentially goes well. It does go in the scoring position if they score here. Baseball, baseball, baseball. It can be tense. Fastball down low, and they walk in a run. They walk in a run. It is now eight six. One out. Bases still loaded. And look who's up to bat. Matt Wilkins has had a tough day. He has had a tough day at the plate and behind the plate. A lot of the behind the plate wasn't his fault, but look where he's at now. You keep playing in the game of baseball. Only takes one. You keep playing. Pitch way out of the strike zone, and Roper hasn't really been close. Oh, 
And you're right, baseball can be cruel, but you can get right back into it quickly. The Roper wind and the 1 0. Up high, 2 and 0. And he needs a that's, visit. That's there six you go. in a row. You got to be taking yeah. a strike here. You would think. Mac Wilkins, three strikeouts right on the day at the plate. And now up in a big situation. And that flips that narrative all, all around, doesn't it? Sure does. A complete 180. With one swing in the back. Roper gets his sign, full line, and the 2 0. In the dirt, not even close. And there's not action, but there's some milling around in the, in the Bishop Snyder bullpen. Both teams have gone through a lot of pitchers as it is. Roper goes stretched to see if he's got more control, and he misses outside. He has walked in his second runner. And it is 8-7, and here comes most likely another pitching change. And I talked about this earlier in the telecast. When you're all over the place, the umpire has, you know, has a tendency yeah. to kind of lose his zone. You're yeah. not going to get that hard to call that. pitch. It would be hard to call that. Totally agree. He hadn't been anywhere near the plate. Hard to call that as the meeting is on the mound. Don't see the coach go to the mound without the hat very often, do you? No. It's a new one on me. The gears Maybe. are turning on both sides. It looks like another pitching change is in order. We'll take a break. Come back. It is crunch time from San Susi Ballpark. We're back on Cedar Bridge 17 after this. Duval is a big place. So you need to get a lot of mileage out of what you drive. At Duval Motor Company, we put service first. With complimentary service loaner vehicles and multiple locations to serve you, our service teams take care of you by providing repair services for every make and model. Ford, Honda, Acura, Subaru, Chevrolet, and everything in between. We've got Duval covered when it comes to service. Any make, any model, any location. DuvalMotorCompany.com Been cutting since 1990. There's something special about cooking out in the backyard. Beautiful out here today. There's nothing like cooking home with your family. The sharing food with the people that I love. Barbecue is all about bringing people together. Because everybody loves barbecue. This is one of those baseball games where the game is so good, the crowd has gotten bigger as the game has gone on. Trenton Torsi is here. I'm Terry Norvell. These are our friends outside San Susi Baseball Park. Two houses have the best view of the ballpark. And they got their, they and got they didn't their, pay a dime to get in. No, they got their own game going on, too. That's How great. great is that? And we are in the middle of a good one here. And they have seen some home runs in their yard. And we've seen a little bit of everything. Here we go. Kellum on the mound for Bishop Snyder. And Pana Vedra, they hit a couple home runs early. They got stymied, but they're making a comeback. Trailing 8-7 with one out, and the bases are loaded. Kellum delivers a first pitch strike. Pana Vedra improbably trying to come back and win a game that they've committed five errors in. Hard to do. How big is strike one there? The pitch, slow breaking ball. Hey, here we go, Rambler. And it was a good one. All right. So it was, what do you do here? No, I mean. Pitch-wise. Mm. I think you go back to that. You got to make a quality 0-2 here. And you is in here, too. You don't have a lot of room to give in. And I'm going to get there as you see the bring the ball miss high. The infield is in. There's one out. I don't understand middle being in. And, and I, I, you know, is it that it's not a given at the high school level you're going to roll a double play cleanly maybe? I, I don't know. I don't know. But That's they're rolling fair. the dice here by bringing the infield in. Here's the one-two pitch. Slow breaking ball just fouled away. As we talked about it earlier. Bringing that infield in raises batting averages. It sure does. I mean, it's... The and, Trent... With the two middle infielders at the grass, that runner on second can get a little loose out there. That's another good point. Off that sure. Bag. Look at that lead on second. I'd be even with the short. He's even Why with the not? shortstop. The 
pitch outside. And here we go. This is the pitch, right? Like with the count, this is the pitch. I mean, you go 3-2, you almost have you to serve it up, right? You don't want them running at 3-2. This is the pitch, I would think. The set and the pitch. Breaking ball stays up high. They will go to a full count here, and everybody might know. They won't be going no, here with one, one out. out. With one out, they won't be going, but you, gosh, you don't want to get to three and two here. Well, you right? go 0-2-3-2 two, two, no, because you're trying to get cute. I mean, you just got to yeah. go right after them in this situation. You don't want to go. Two great pitches to start the hitter, and it hasn't been close since. Not even anything to bite at. Kellum's ready. The belt and the pitch. And it misses outside. The third consecutive, correct, third consecutive walk that forces in a run. And we're tied. We are tied at eight with one out. Bases are loaded. And the great game of baseball can be cruel. Sometimes those outs are so hard to get. Trenton Dorcia. When you get to this part of the game, they're all hard to get. What, what number? Batter. Grady Hartman. He steps up to the plate. And, <laughs> I mean, did he think getting out of the old uh, bed this morning, he's going to get up at an 8-8, eight, eight, bottom of the six, bases loaded, one out situation. But there he is. One for three on the day is Mr. Hartman. And he's taking his time. And I don't blame him. We're tied at eight. Bonavita has never led, right? They tied it at two. They tied it at two with back-to-back -back home runs. That was never led in this ball game. It seemed like it was yesterday. This ball game. Did it seem like yesterday? It really that did. 0-1 oh though. Can Kellum wiggle out of this mess? Down in the dirt again. Bartram Trail and First Coast will be our third and final game, 7 o'clock, first pitch on CW17. But we've got game two to put in bed and finish off. Swing and a miss, or excuse me, swing and a foul down third base. You're going to see that big breaking ball right here on a 1-2 count. That way, is that what you got? Are you signaling that in? I like it. Kellum is working that gum over, boy, isn't he? <laughs> Oh boy, what a lonely feeling that must be on the mound. Here is the pitch. Fisted. But it falls well, he, harmlessly to the dirt. He fell off a good pitch he right really there. He did. And you know, if that thing's 20 feet toward the infield, it's an easy pop up. Yep. Mm, and he's thinking about it. Well, you got to figure too here. You Hartman can't, is thinking about it. You can't leave, can't leave it in the umpire's hands. Anything close, Absolutely. just fight it off. Infield still in. And he did just that. He was fooled halfway. That pitch halfway fooled him, didn't it? It did, and he kind of double loaded, right? Like he really he, did. He started to commit to the swing. He and really he did. Got the hands back just in time and fought off another good pitch. We'll do it again, one and two. Chop, that could be trouble. Shortstop fields it. Where's he gonna go with it? Where's he gonna go with it? He's out. And Snyder trying to record the out here. And they do. <laughs> what about that? But the run scored, correct? The run scored on the chopper. And due to the time constraint, this was the final inning. So that'll do it. This is our second walk-off with the walk-off charities tournament. How about that? So just different scores. <laughs> with a four-run bottom of the sixth, the umpires and Coach Osbeck are talking. But it looks like Panavedra has come all the way back. And they have gone 2-0 and oh in this tournament as yes the teams are shaking hands now as you can see what a comeback i'm looking <laughs> how about that as I'm you see these two teams shaking hands i'm looking at my scorebook 
and I don't know how to uh, I don't know how to score that. That was interesting. Uh, the easiest way to say the third base runner scored <laughs> that end of the game. And that's the ball game. That <laughs> is the ball game. As uh, Fielder's we choice will ball game. somehow try and pick a player of the game out of this, and uh, wow, I mean, you've got a nine-eight final. You've got the team that won, Pana Vedra, committing five errors but getting out of here with a win. You've got the, both rosters from top to bottom contributed on both sides. And Mr. Torsia, we're going to try and look at the player of the game. As you see, Hartman earlier in the ball game kind of got things going. Kind of got things going. That was Hartman, a big hit right there. Big hit. And then he was right in the middle of things. And we give Grady Hartman the game-winning RBI because a lot happened, but the outs were not recorded before that run scored. But what a gritty, tough at bat he had right there. Really, really was. So the Duval Motor Company player of the game, Grady Hartman, walks out of there. What hit hard, what hit far, and the shortstop, the poor shortstop, just no man's land. No man's land. Let's take a break, regroup, and we'll come back and talk to a winning coach and maybe even a player or two as we are wrapping up the mid-game, the middle game of three. Ponte Vedra wins 9-8. We'll put a wrap on it on the other side. Many times when people are injured at a place of business, they don't realize they may have a case. The fact is injuries should not happen. And most of the time when someone is injured, someone is at fault. Maybe the store manager installed a cheap, slippery floor, or there wasn't proper security. After an injury at a hotel, restaurant, store, or any place of business, it's so important to call us. Time matters, size matters. Morgan & Morgan, for the people. Com. Sunday, February 27th, March moves to its new night. I'm very proud of the band. They've shown me that you can be number one. Now, our halftime heroes are marching to Sundays. We might be ranked eight right now, but it's going to get higher. This band has more soul. We're the best band in the land. March limited series continues Sunday, February 27th, only on The CW. I'm Nicole Byer. I'm Tay Diggs. Join us as we host the 27th Annual Critics' Choice Awards. Live Sunday, March 13th on The CW. We make hosting look good. Back here at beautiful San Susi Ballpark on the south side of Jacksonville. I'm Terry Norvell, my broadcast partner, Trenton Torsia. Trent, we just saw a good one. We just saw two good baseball teams go at it, and they both leave this park better because of the game. Ponte Vedra wins 9-8, and uh, we've got Coach Tom Stanton from Ponte Vedra, I think, lined up. Coach, uh, a little bit of everything. I'll lead things off. There was so much in that game. But your baseball team, a gritty, gutty performance with a big five in the error column. You guys fought through a five-error game against a good baseball team. Talk about it. Yeah, I mean, sometimes you got to be a little bit more than good to be good. And uh, we just found a way to play over some mistakes. Uh, obviously, it's not the way you want to do it, but in a dress rehearsal, it's way better than doing it in the regular season. Well, and that's uh, one thing I was going to ask Coach. It's Trent. So the five errors, uh, got to clean that up, obviously. But uh, the resilience to fight back and fight back and just peck away. I mean, you got to be proud of your guys. That's what you want every day. You want them just to keep grinding and do what they're asked to do and focus on the process, not the results. I mean, they very easily could have said, uh, and pouted about it, but they didn't. They just continued to be mature about what they did and went business-like business mentality, and you know, that's why you have you know, the game knows when it does that, and the game rewarded them. Coach, look, let me ask you about your, your team, your roster top to bottom. My goodness. Uh, two or three innings ago, you started running pinch hitters in and everybody contributed. Now, same thing with Bishop Snyder. This was a great game between two good teams, but coach, you must drive out of here with your coaching staff and you look at your roster top to bottom. You've got a lot of options on that team. A lot of your guys that were non-starters contributed in a meaningful way today. Absolutely. You guys see why we were excited about it. I mean, we, we see a lot of cool things in practice and we see a lot of buying into what we're, you know, what we're doing and just being competitive and make sure everything's, uh, you know, they're competing obviously all the time. And we want to make sure it's always competitive. Before games, we don't give them the feel-good flips. We make sure it's something competitive. So 
they're prepared. Our, our options are you want to feel good or you want to be prepared well. And we decided to prepare them well today. Coach, congratulations. A 2-0 and week preseason, but your team is better because of these two games uh, going into next week's uh, opener as uh, high school baseball starts next week. Coach, safe trip back home. Uh, look forward to watching your club play the rest of the season. Yes, sir. Thanks for having us. We're always glad to be with Frank and Walk Off Charities, and we appreciate being here. Thank you, buddy. That'll wrap it up. Game two is in the books. What a thriller. Ponavedra 9, Bishop Snyder 8, a game that had a little bit of everything. Stay with us if Game 3, which comes up at 7 o'clock, is anywhere near as good as Game 2. You don't want to miss this Game 3, which will be Bartram Trail and First Coast coming up at 7 o'clock. That'll wrap it up for my broadcast partner, Trenton Torsi. I'm Terry Norvell. Hang tight. More baseball comes about the top of the 7 o'clock hour. You are watching High School Baseball on CW17.